All right, I believe for this moment we are living enough, living presumed, living perhaps. I'm not sure living to what degree, honestly, but perhaps living a little bit. Wow. The music is actually so loud this time that it's actually kind of overpowering that alert that is kind of pretty loud. Uh, on its own. Right. Is right even the word I was looking for? I was trying to not just have that out with just me saying which word am I looking for, but... <laughs> but Red Bear, hello and welcome. And welcome to Burn, but thank you to Red Bear for 41 months. That's a lot of time. Enjoy your Bob, enjoy your no ads, and enjoy your extra channel points. I believe that's basically it. That's the things that I should be trying to remember at this point. To say when that happens. But uh, also, speaking of no ads, I did have to look up an additional thing that... I don't know how much of this I should say out loud on here, but... Well, I will say that... Uh, Recently, I was at a stream of somebody that I like to watch, and apparently they started to actually put out mid-roll ads, which I had not seen before, so I had to look into exactly the mechanics of how those things worked, and they let me, that research led me to some interesting conclusions, that's all that I will actually say right now. Perhaps some people might be motivated to do the same, but anyway, I think what I'm going to do right now is just go ahead and get straight into things, since I'm starting so much later. And usual, also check out, I got like a nifty new transition that I guess is just gonna happen now. I don't know if that is gonna st randomly stop working like the old transition that I had, which was like just fading in and out. Very well might, but oh well. Oh yeah, I forgot to <laughs> freaking clear this out, I guess I'll do that now. Uh, which probably won't make a difference anyway, because I don't think I'm gonna be using this. I'm actually gonna be using the other one. And for once, I'm actually back to doing a game that will be um, actual 16 by 9 display. This game, in fact, I actually have an excuse to actually have that on screen at this point that uh, doesn't contradict everything else that I'm doing, so that's cool. Switch the appearance to, you know, the one that you can actually read when it's like that, too. But speaking of moving things along, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the usual that I do here. The daily special, as you might say. Which is guessing some VGM tracks, which I will get to in just a moment, I guess. I will start up my phone and go to the stopwatch, and that's an excuse to let this sound, which is, which is in its last few seconds here, play out, at least until the video is quiet, and then I will surreptitiously get out of the way so that I can play again this thing first of all. Tomb Raider, main theme, and then Pilot 264 hang glider for a bit, and then get the rest of this ready. There we go. Oh uh, dear, as per usual. Told hello, Shogakiki, and hello, actor. Welcome, and you're just in time for trying to guess what's going on here. And for me to play video games for a little bit, maybe as a bit of a surreptitious tactic for me to end up playing this game for a little bit less time this time, since I did end up getting some bizarre motion sickness the last time I played it, but I did end up changing a few settings, I haven't really tested it since, I played it for any actual amount of time since, but I did change some settings on it, which will hopefully improve that situation, but for now I'm gonna do the 5 EDM track guessing, which will be after this. I have random tracks, which each will each play for about a minute, and which... Maybe you guys are anyone, so let's just go ahead and get straight into that with whatever this is. Which I hope has the volume adjusted right, I think it does, just based on the look of the audio levels here. But I don't know, I'm always a little bit paranoid about that. <laughs> I think you can probably, yeah, guess the game. Another game that I should probably... I don't know, I feel like I want to play through Gold Knights as like the most famous... Uh, the more famous one of like the two big rare FPSs from the N64. And yet I feel like I honestly find the idea, the concept of... Um, 
Perfect Dark and just the gameplay that I've seen of it so far compared to GoldenEye, more appealing, but... Well, it's gonna be another 10 seconds before this actually gets officially revealed, but sure enough, this is GoldenEye. And according to this upload, it's the track name given... I don't know if this is one of those examples, I think it is, where this did eventually get like an actual official soundtrack release with official titles, but what the title given in this upload anyway is Escape from Missile Train. So I guess it would be Train Escape. I don't know, they just have some really, really vague and distant memories of not doing well at GoldenEye at all when I played it as a kid, my family. I don't think I ever actually got to play the actual, like, actually perfect arc and actual physical hardware, though. But I did check out both the, uh, like, that weird custom build of, I think it was Project 64 or 1964, that, uh, one, one of the N64 emulators that lets you do both GoldenEye and perfect arc with actual mouse and keyboard controls. So that's pretty neat, though. Also, the next track is playing already. I wonder what game this could be. Words have been said that I can probably get this just by context, even if this is still a series altogether, not just a game, but a series altogether where I've like barely touched, and it has just continued to be that way. Yeah, maybe I should do more of that, like over the, uh, the course of this next year in anticipation for with Chase 400, just try to try and clear out all these bizarre series that I just know nothing about that are in the chase. I at least trying to at least trying to play some of them, including presumably Sonic Adventure 2 Wild Canyon. Is that what this is actually called? Well, apparently it is. I did manage to win the coin flip in which Sonic Adventure this is. It's apparently Sonic Adventure 2. And it does say Kick the Rock Wild Canyon. I don't know if that implies that there's another Wild Canyon. Uh, track that's not this, but that doesn't seem to be the case now. Okay. Kukuni de? Well. I think pretty much all of the knuckle strapping tracks are supposed to, or it's reasonable to assume that they come from Trick Adventure 2. That's how I tell them apart. Uh, is this thing. Okay, so this does have the regulated body, but not quite as much as I would have liked. That's a little bit better. It's just a tiny bit though, but let's just go ahead and listen to the next one here. Ooh. A game which I'm pretty sure, ironically enough, I... I know what track this is, I'm pretty sure, but also... I'm pretty sure I heard about... I don't know if it was this game specifically, but at least this series... Uh, like in some game magazine when I was a kid, I think, had a... A walkthrough for one of these games, I think. Something like that. Or at least a checklist for something that you could do in one of these games, and it looked pretty appealing to me, but I tried playing the very first of these games on, uh, like, an emulator recently, and I, know, I felt like the control for it was really janky. Maybe I should just go back to it. But I get the feeling that the only way that I'm gonna be able to, uh, like, it's a kind of game that the only way I'm gonna be able to stay consistent with it is by playing it on the stream, so maybe I should make a note of that. So many games that uh, whenever they come up, it's like people get rid of that that I haven't played them yet. Though I don't know if I would say if this is one of them. Strangely enough, but perhaps for that very reason, I would say that it has marginally more appeal for me. Anyway, it's safe escape, and I'm pretty sure it's Pick Point Matrix. Yeah, Pick Point Matrix. Yeah, I get the feeling that one of the whatever the Ape Escape thing that I saw in a magazine back in the day must have been one of the sequels, probably something on PS2, I would say, even though I don't even know like what all the games in this series were on System Voice. I know there was like a some kind of Ape Escape in joke cameo thing in Mirror Year Solid 3, which is another series where I only played one of them and then didn't really make any kind of effort to move on to the others, but 
Uh, let's just go ahead and check this real quick. To confirm that this is the middle one, and then move on to what else is after this, which is this. Ooh. Well, I know what this is. It's one of those extremely long winded RPGs. Uh, that I actually played the entirety of on stream and it took me like several months each time. And yet I still feel compelled to... Like there's not really any more games in this series, quote unquote, that... I could even play on stream at this point because I had played all of them on stream, but there are the predecessors which, from what I've heard, uh, are similarly winded and complex, and yet I still feel like I should play them on stream sometime. I gotta play MGS3 and do it with all of them. Well, I played MG, like, I played the shitty version of Metal Gear 1, which was the NES version, and I played MGS1. And that's it. That's all that I played of that series. I don't know. I get a feeling that maybe I would have um, played more of them at the time, if not for the fact that I don't think that uh, PS2 emulation was quite a streamlined at that point as it is today, or at least or maybe just was that I didn't have a like good enough hardware that I wanted to bother looking into that and thinking that I was gonna be able to pull it off. Definitely that line of thinking. Anyway it's been more than a minute now so this is clearly Earth C from uh Cinoblade one. Yep. Another one where I'm not sure I would say another one, but I feel like it's the exception in Xenoblade themes where I'm not sure if I prefer the night version or the day version. In most of them, I'm pretty sure I prefer the night version. And this is the, I think that, at least for this track, this area, the tracks are comparable. So let's go ahead and one more time eyeball this and move on to the last one here. Okay, which I'm pretty sure I know what it is too. MG3 is a masterpiece or so, they say. Yeah, I heard them say that. I mean, there's a... Uh, not too sure exactly what happens in the game, except for, like, a few scattered details, but I've def definitely been uh, made aware of um, what happens at the very start of the game a number of times, so this is a short one. Well, that's... <laughs> doesn't even get to 30 seconds, but... That was Mario 3 All-Stars version. I think that was Desert Heal, the second world. I want to see. Nope, never mind, it was apparently Pipeline World 7. Which is a little bit strange. I don't know, I feel like I should probably know the Mario 3 overworld themes better, but... Maybe I should actually replay that game sometime. I guess the bonus 6 track, oh. It's actually one of my... One of the tracks that I think I even put in my top 100 for the chase. Really one of the tracks that I know better from this series, but yeah, that's the bonus track here. Which is... Uh, head Honcho Carpaccio from Mario Master of Disguise. I don't know. Feels like very few, if any, other tracks at all in this OST sound as good as this one, at least in my ears. I also have like three separate um, tabs open for the freaking YouTube randomizer because I was trying to like very quickly try to learn some Toho stuff and like reinforce Zelda, I guess. Even though I didn't even need to do that in before Chase 300, but I feel like the Toho stuff only kind of worked very marginally, so maybe it'll help me in like the regular chases, I guess, for the next year. But anyway, that brings us to the end of the section, so let me go ahead and uh, keep things sort of kind of streamlined and get straight into the game here. Alan Wake, not remastered, it's the old, um, the crotchety old version that I have, because I was able to get it for dirt cheap on Steam back in the day, because they thought that it was going to be permanently delisted, but it was only temporarily delisted, because apparently they eventually just uh, removed the music licenses, I think it was, that caused it to go into that situation in the first place. Go ahead and fade that out, and I will temporarily bring this back, so I Take a moment to, well, whatever this is. Uh, let's make it mm, this one, sure. Actually, no, let's make it the other one that I put into the, uh, this one. <laughs> Which I just put into this playlist. <laughs> so why not? Because it's a nice tune that they have for the early part of the game. And may or may not somehow 
crop up later, just based on how far it is into the OST. And while this is playing, because I'm pretty sure this is just like barely over a minute track, but that's okay. I'm pretty sure I have tracks on here that are less than that. Let's scroll down very, very slightly so I can get Alan Wake in my sights again. And get that on screen in just a moment. But yeah, like I mentioned, the last time that I, well, pretty much the only time that I played slash stream this in within the past several years. Uh, I did play it for a while and it did take a while to happen, but it did end up giving me some pretty crazy motion sickness. So I did uh, adjust a few settings to maybe try to ameliorate that a little bit. And hopefully it works, because I haven't really been like on the road to testing that in any kind of long term uh, fashion. At all. Alright, there we go. <laughs> just in time. But hey, I have faith. And just based on the time, it's kind of a given that I'm gonna be doing this for a little bit less time right now than at least I might have projected last time, so. Let's see. I think we're just gonna continue the game from the Steam Cloud, which was. What were we doing? Let me see if I can remember. Previously on Alan Wake. I think this game even gives you those kinds of uh, screens, which is like, hey, this is what's happening in the game before you left, but what are we doing? I think it did run around in the game a little bit, which is why it's gonna turn out that I'm not in the exact spot in the game, which is where I was when I last left. I see this boy. Let's see if I can remember how the controls work. See if I can remember how to do this, okay. I think you run with, okay, with L1 or LB or what have you. I'm gonna stay right here. I'm pretty sure I want to go right here regardless because there's some stuff. Yeah, but this is the actual last checkpoint that I activated when I was playing. And I had not even picked up the shoot gun and the ammo for it that was over here, but now I have it. Let's see if I can remember how this works. Okay, that's how that works. You can also tap L1, I'm pretty sure, to dodge if you're being attacked. And as far as the plot, let me see. Previously on Alan Wake, we were at some kind of hotel in the world where they come. Hold on. I don't want them to get a leg up on me. I'm gonna be able to line myself up with this turkey, probably so I can retreat. But apparently it was like this bizarre, dark world madness that apparently sets in sometimes around here and it's literally powered by the darkness and also our wife got kidnapped I think and we were going to lover speak to meet with someone who may or may not have been the kidnapper and may or may not be involved with whatever the fuck is happening. Apparently they were nice enough to leave us a message. And I think one of the settings that I did was change it so that the, the flashlight beam isn't... Oh fuck, isn't in the middle of the screen always this time. I guess this... Uh, I was wondering if this was going to make me invincible. I suppose it is, to a degree. Oh, hey, this might actually go, oh, never mind. This might actually be an exploit if this guy's going to... I'm going to be nice enough to not actually be able to hit me during this. A Douglas Fair. Oh, well, that's another uh, bit of a nudge to Twin Peaks. It is measured to be 66 meters tall, nearly a record length, but not quite. Held by lightning in 1937. And you know, I just, I feel like another factor that probably didn't help with my uh, cerebral experience of this game before was the, the very low brightness and high contrast that the flashlight creates, but hopefully that's gonna be handled a little bit better by, by my brain at this point. I don't know though. Oh. I'm pretty sure I dodged that. I could not see these guys throwing stuff at me though. I might be about to die once more. I was about to die.
die once more. That part of the prophecy was true, but I think I also managed to... Okay, I'm back here. Does that mean that I haven't picked... No. Hold on, I have picked this up, but... Uh, I'm gonna take a look over there anyway. Even now, I'm not exactly sure of where I am as far as the... How far along in the timeline I am. Did I already pick up the stuff that's over here? No, I did not. Okay. <laughs> if I die before I hit another checkpoint, I'm gonna have to come back here and pick this stuff up again. I could also, you know, actually use the shotgun, which I probably should. Even though it doesn't seem like your um, stuff that you pick up, your guns and what have you, actually carries over from one chapter to another. I'm gonna, definitely gonna get attacked at this point if I just wander off. It probably doesn't seem like a good idea to just wander off like I'm doing. I think it's harder than the NGC most weeks, it takes like twice as long to make vulnerable with the, uh, the thing, the flashlight, and also. Okay, I'm trying. Why just long to kill with a gun? I'm still actually vulnerable. Yeah, it might be a good idea. Oh, fuck. <laughs> good idea to stick to the beaten path. I get a feeling that if I hadn't done that, I actually would have maybe not died right there. Uh, okay, I'm back here again, so I'm gonna have to get the shotgun stuff again. I need to actually focus, I suspect. I mean, I guess I'm already resigned to the fate of that. I'm not gonna be able to get everything in the game unless I play a second time while on oh, adding increased difficulty, so. I mean, I might as well act in accordance with that knowledge. just sucks and maybe it actually does make a difference uh, like how close to the head I aim when I do stuff. See, so yeah, I can actually see a light up ahead. It's gonna make it my biggest priority at this point to actually get over there. I get the feeling, yeah, that even if I run I'm still gonna, I'm not gonna be able to outrun this guy. So what I should be doing instead is periodically turning back and blinding him. But that also means that I need to look in the opposite direction of where I'm moving, which I guess while doable is a bit trickier than what I want to deal with right now. Well, it seems to be the underway. You know, this reminds me of... Uh, I've been continuing to play Dread, Metroid Dread, by myself off stream because I guess I do want to have that uh, my first playthrough of the game at least be a more chill experience and uh, that doesn't mean of course that I'm not gonna completely forego bringing it to stream I might do that sometime but in Metroid Dread uh, like I thought the way that you deal with the enemies in the first part of the game is gonna be like a constant or standard or something to that effect. It turns out it is not you actually. Actually run into way more beefed up versions of them later on that are I don't know, feel a lot more unfair if you use the exact same tactics with them as you did with the earlier ones. So you pretty much are forced to use every tactic that's available to you at that moment to actually make it through. And it feels like maybe, just maybe, some uh, some other expression of that trope or whatever you want to call it is in play right now. Oh boy. Right now I can't even look <laughs> if I want to be able to defend myself from these assholes. Get 
I made it to the light. Should it be right behind me? Did it blow out while I wasn't looking? It probably did. So that wasn't a checkpoint at all. Hold on. I wonder if I can actually start this thing again. Oh. Maybe then it will be a checkpoint. There we go. That took long enough. Took me long enough to realize that uh, that would be the ultimate state of the situation too. What do we got here? Sure, this is a an emergency. I would say. So, what if you don't have anything to put those batteries into, or uh, anything to put those bullets into? How's that gonna help you then? Corner, afraid of what the flashlight's beam might reveal. Suddenly. A roughly painted symbol of a torch glowed in the light. Behind it, hidden by a rock, sat a battered metal trunk. It was here for a reason. Packed with supplies, batteries, flares, ammo. Things you need to make it through the darkness of the night. Something left behind by someone who knew what I knew. And more. Someone who already knew that I was gonna have a flashlight on me and a gun. Like, I guess at least the flare guns... Uh... Or like an all-in-one package. Those you don't really have to worry about, but everything else, like... You don't already have a flashlight on you, or uh, a gun, then it's not really gonna help you all that much. Drop hazard, by the way. Seem like we're gonna get much use out of that phone, so let's uh, just... Continue to carry right along to lower speech. Bear alert. I wonder if the bears are gonna be vulnerable to my flashlight. I wonder if the bears are also prone, or any of the animals here for that matter. I'm gonna be prone to getting taken over by these like evil demonic darkness corruption. I wonder if darkness is like the X parasite in Metroid Fusion. Speaking of a certain other thing. Uh, shoot. Yeah, I'm just kind of cornered here. Because of the awkward terrain. And these guys are uh, all chopping me up, even though I'm... Shining the light within his face. Sure are a lot of these boys this time. I know that one of them went back to the right of me. That I did catch. Okay, I think it's time to bring this out, maybe, so I would have thought if I actually had a chance to connect the shutter. Let's try that again. Let's try to... I don't remember was there actually anything worth looking at over there. I don't think there was. Let's stick to the path here that we can actually, you know... We can actually not have that awkward terrain right in front of us. Probably a good idea. Seems like the timing for actually dodging the axe guys, well, or sledgehammer, as the case may be, attacks. Might be uh, a bit tighter than I anticipated, and also. Uh, probably would benefit from. from using the shotgun. Like that much I am able to pick up on. But at the same time, I am being stubborn and conservative with my resources. I say conservative even though I am spending a lot more gun ammo, pistol ammo, than uh, theoretically I guess I would be spending individual shotgun shells if I were to actually use that. But I... I don't know, I just kind of assume based on what I've seen in the game so far. I probably shouldn't be going this way because I'd probably just get ambushed by more randomly appearing guys. So I won't continue to go that way at least. But I don't know, I just kind of assume that I'm going to be able to get more. 
Uh, more pistol ammo more easily than I am gonna get the shotgun one. Yes, I've seen that. The only designated hiking trail, this picnic table over here is extremely dangerous. You didn't leave me anything back here like a coffee thermos or a... A thing of extra resources. That is weird. Through the tree. I mean, maybe if the tree was removed entirely, we wouldn't have to go through it, but I guess it's part of the, the quaint hiking trail scenery. I mean, you kind of have to wonder if that sign is necessary at all, really. Like, it's pretty self-explanatory. Checkpoint time, checkpoint time. Dogs must be leashed at all times. Which feels kind of weird, considering that they're in the middle. This would probably be a good reason for that, so we can't go through there, though, can we? Just straight up, not an option. It's not barricaded, even. Vehicles prohibited, no littering, dogs must be leashed in case you missed it. Dates from 1846, the year of the Oregon Treaty. It's also a going on a swing. Looks better there. This ring was cut from started growing in 1846, the year the Oregon Treaty was signed. Oh, it was felled in 1987. Other notable events marked in the rings, the Washington Territory was formed, founding the Wright Falls Mining Company and the town itself in 1878, apparently. Washington was granted statehood, tree damage in a forest fire, the Wright Falls Mining Company closes its door. After a volcanic eruption below Cauldron Lake in 1970, I guess at least 30 years before wherever the present supposed to be. Mount St. Helens erupts and tree fell by storm in 87. Hmm. So when was the forest fire? 2000... Doesn't one of those labels... Like, like you can barely read it, but doesn't one of those labels say 2000 something? Doesn't quite match up with the... Uh, yeah, the outermost one I think does. Doesn't quite match up with what's written on that sign. This has been very, very edifying, very informative, but how are we to carry on from here? We have to melee the... how do we do that? I'm trying right to... Oh, there's a button for it, but I can't remember what it is. Is it this? No, it's this. Well, it's definitely not that. I was wondering. At least that's realistic. Where are we going, though? It's apparently that just led, led to us being given the information at the tree, but... Oh, we have to go this way to get to Lover's Peak, and yet this is barricaded, so what are we gonna do? We climb over this. We can climb over this, okay. I guess it was that simple. Desperately wanted to turn the car around and just drive until he passed out or ran out of road and booze. But he had a job to do. He had a rider to catch at any cost. So Agent Nightingale is like the opposite of Agent Cooper if he doesn't like the trees or the coffee. <laughs> or the small towns. We made it to the cable car. Nature trail, moon 
Ocean Cave, yeah, we passed that. That was a while ago, so I would expect that, hopefully. More presumably, I guess. Or, to be put, there presumably wouldn't be that much left in this chapter. Let me check something through real quick. I don't think that this should be any different, but yeah, this is turned up all the way. I think this is actually a little bit quiet, at least the, uh, the dialogue is compared to pretty much any other sounds that are coming from my computer right now, but... I guess that's how it's supposed to sound. Not swing, cabin, keep arms and head inside at all times. Or, you know... Some unexpected stuff could happen, and the birds could, um... ...be very unhelpful in helping you... ...uh, comply with those rules. Stuff. I mean, it works. Also, I mean, we could have been using flares too, but they're pretty limited in supply. You can see them too. Hell, of course I see them. Come on, we gotta move. Why? Oh, <laughs> oh we have five flares. Yeah, but let's move. I lost my gun back there. Oh, I've got a gun. Just keep that light steady on him. It took a moment, but then. I recognized him. He'd been on the ferry when I first arrived here with Alice. He knew my name. We were headed in the direction of Lover's Peak. There was no way this was a coincidence. He was the kidnapper. Come on, Wake! You gotta keep up! You set him up, and I'll knock him down, Wake! The kidnapper, who was also a secret ally? <laughs> Alright. Yes, he's gonna be the one with the gun now, but we also have uh, six flares. Whatever that's going to be. They're gonna be like grenades. Doesn't look like they're the same kinds of flares that are shot out of the flare gun, or at least not uh, like they're not gonna have that same level of propulsion anyway. Yeah, here's one. I wonder if this is gonna be a case of like um, this guy being like one of the half life guards where he has infinite ammo, so you can just try to get him to shoot all your enemies to death for you. Because you can't do it yourself. And probably a few more examples of uh, that kind of thing happening in video games that I can think of where you have like an AI partner with infinite ammo, but it's a lot jankier trying to. Oh fuck, what? Trying to take advantage of that guy's um, resources than just being able to use them yourself directly. Better stick to the trail too, even though I'm curious about this gate looking thing that I can see from back here. Looks like there would maybe be something here, but I guess not. What daring you park or jump over it? Right, let's just go. Ooh. This guy's just like. Are you rushing to the scene? It's really funny because uh, a certain guessing contest in a, in a server, I mean, which may or may not, uh, I may or may not have advertised this particular game that I'm streaming it uh, tonight. And two. Recently had a thing where you they pretty much do every week when you have to guess a uh, number of video game tracks within a YouTube video. Get these boards off. Oh, okay. Yeah, no can do. Are you kidding? Give me the gun. No time for back talk. Hold them off, damn it. Yeah, me having the gun would probably be uh, better instead of a 
affairs here. I could use the flares, but I guess I should use flares if I'm getting, being given this many of them. Oh, I'll use the flare. How do I do it? Oh, hold on, RP, which will tell me. Oh, that just scares him off. Well, not if they somehow manage to sneak up behind me. Flare here, right. There we go. That wasn't too bad, was it? And I guess you can just stay here to uh, be invincible now. Maybe now I can try to finish my thought, which was that uh, one of the tracks that was guessed on last week's video was that. Was uh, from the, the fan made remake of Action 52, specifically Illuminator, which is a game where you pretty much have a flashlight meter just like that, just like the one you have in this game, and you have to. Use it to kill vampires. Alright, here we go. Last stand. There's more players here. Get ready. We fight them as long as they keep coming. Give me the goddamn guns! They're coming! That's not how this goes. Get with the program, Wake. <laughs> Alright, so this time it's oh there's the coffee, by the way. <laughs> Did miss that. Yes, I will drop off there right here so that I can quickly run and get the coffee. Okay, that guy's more vulnerable. I don't quite count that. And that guy's already vulnerable too. That's Really taking his time trying to uh, actually fight these guys off. Wait, well, oh, they're coming from that direction too. They're just gonna actually parkour their way down here? Oh, fuck, what? Oh, hold on. I don't know where all of these fuckers came from. I think they're just completely. Apparently, just have been rendered completely. Uh, not rendered anything, just they've been able to surround me completely, which is not what I was expecting. Because the fact there didn't seem to be any of them behind me just before that happens, but happened there. Uh... Yeah, no kidding, especially since I don't have to do... I only have to do like half of the aiming, I can just spam the flare. Even though I'm... Avoiding doing that except when this happens and I'm literally surrounded on all directions. So. Oh, have to just pop another flare here. And there's this guy who apparently just is all the variety that completely refuses to be. Am I being attacked from behind? I think I am, yeah. Oh, flare time again. Surely we can take care of this guy. Honestly, that reminds me very slightly of uh, that Lord of the Rings game for GameCube. Fucking Black Eight battle. You were gonna say that. I read it all before. You're a hell of a writer. Congratulations. You're gonna bring about something glorious and terrible once we get you some uh, proper editorial control. What the hell are you talking about? Where's Alice? I want the entire manuscript, or she's gonna suffer bad. You touch her all. We'll both take a bit of a tumble. Kill you if you hurt Alice. Do you hear me? Come back here. 
I can't ask you to come back here or I can't go in the completely different direction. I thought it held some magical power, but I had no manuscript to give him. I had to get back to Barry and figure out my next move. Yeah, before we do that though, let's take another one of these little caches that we can find here. We still have the flares, but we have the gun again now, so hopefully we're gonna be... And we lost our shotgun, so I guess that was a very narrow window of opportunity in which to use it. <laughs> like it wasn't even a you lose everything at the end of the chapter like what happened before, it's more of a we're gonna lose everything halfway through the chapter that we had up until that point. It's gonna be replaced with certain other things. I mean, we're slowly amassing some kind of manuscript with all these pages. On more than one occasion, Alice had tried to explain to me how it felt to be afraid of the dark. To her, darkness wasn't simply the absence of light, but something more tangible than that. It was something you could touch and feel. Worse than that, it was something with a mind of its own, something malicious and malign. For her, things changed when they were wrapped in darkness. They turned into something else, something foreign and nothing was safe or innocent anymore. I'd never really understood what she meant, until now. Hmm. So is this... Uh, I can really tell if those are all supposed to be like part of a story that he was writing in some timeline in some universe. In some... thing that could have justified how all that happened to come about, or if it was just like that by itself, or that mixed in with some... Well, journal type musings. That part seemed like more of a journal type musing. At least we don't have to worry about the trees coming down and taking a bath in the river. Oh, there's a guy. See you over there. See the stream with a bunch of crap sticking out of it. I have to wonder what's up with that. Oh, are those. I mean, I saw that from very far away, but I thought it might be something that. It might be something I might be able to pick up. It only hit me right before that happened. What it actually was. Should I be taking detours like this? I feel compelled to do it every single time, but at the same time... <clears throat> I've seen what happens when I do it uh, without giving it that much thought. That's not a very appealing thought. I feel less compelled to do it when I do give it more thought, you might say. Well, it doesn't really seem like I can get to the other side of the river right now, so I guess I have to stick here anyway. How do I... I guess I just avoid them. Probably not a great idea to mess with them if I can see them from that far away. But where are they? I don't see them. Oh, here's one. And there's a bunch of them, okay, <laughs> I guess there actually are going to be more of them in the, the lit areas. I don't think I came around this way, so I might assume that I'm... It's probably in my best interest to continue in this direction. Sarah didn't care about the legal threats Wake's agent made. She let Wake go without argument, because there was something about him she couldn't quite put her finger on. Something that reminded her of her father. She didn't think Wake would hurt his wife. Then she thought about the way he waded into Hartman. That hair of rage flaring up and sweating. The way he waded into Hartman. I'm sure I understand what that's supposed to... Like how I'm supposed to parse that verb. How do you wade into someone... And... Interpret that in any way other than how do you walk like a penguin into someone? Let's see if I can figure out where I was. 
sorry. So maybe this stream bridge leads to a place that I haven't been because I don't remember the road after the last tree bridge I crossed looking like what was on the other side. change there except just the uh, not the big old shake. I'm not sure what the implications of that were, maybe it just means that those guys are gonna show up more often, which I think is what this uh, weird blur mist effect usually means, unfortunately. I definitely feel more compelled to stick to the beaten path while an effect like this is going on. Second part of that until it was thrust upon me. Exhausted, and my body felt as though it had been chewed up and spat out. The flashlight was heavy in my hand, and each pull of the trigger sent a painful shock up my arm. But I was finally out of the woods, and things were looking up. That's when I heard the chainsaw. Are we gonna hear the chainsaw? Is this gonna be a uh, like that enemy that is contractually obligated to be in every? Well, at least that it felt like it was contractually obligated to be in every numbered Resident Evil game after number four. Even the one, the version from Resident Evil 6, which was just absurdly overpowered as far as how much health it had. That game was just a mess overall, though. Now let's see what happens when I actually mess with this. Get a checkpoint and a little bit of heals, which we probably didn't need too badly by that point. What happens if we aim the hunting rifles? This would be the normal camp. Because we have laser aiming with the. the flashlight beam. To a degree. But I guess we have that with the regular pistol too. Standing under a beam of light also refills your flashlight meter a little bit faster. Feeling that that's not necessarily the case though. Is there anything up here? This hill looks empty and suspicious. Let's see, maybe not. Maybe I just found like a. Sent a shiver down my spine. Totally better go check it out. Not before checking out this flare, though. I wonder how many flares we can carry. 
Uh, before it tells you that you can carry anymore. It's like a pretty low res texture, but I don't know. A physics object, but I guess I also didn't realize that I could shine something out of existence within the plane without even... Oh, it's one of these things. Was it within the plane or is it just one of these uh, bits of black goop, which I feel like have come up in the game before, but I don't even remember what the situation was when that happened. Is there anything inside? Anything here that would be of great value to us? Is it just another physics object? I guess not. Yeah. Well, that was exciting. Probably shouldn't uh, investigate old wrecks or abandoned places unless you want tetanus. Hmm. I guess we can. Yeah, it looks like there's some kind of secret resource over there, but how do we get there? We just climb up here. Okay, apparently we can. Apparently this swing is perfectly stable to where it's not gonna shift at all when we walk on it. So we can carry at least 12 flares, that's something. Now is going to be the time to continue going down and get through some more of the woods. Perhaps try to spy a. Uh, yeah, I think that's on the far side of there. The actual objective. I see. I can tell that there's someone to the left of me. Just evidently, I'm not thrilled about the prospect of that person existing. Feels like a nice time to stick to the beaten path so that I don't, uh, or at least hopefully have a minimal dealing with situation when it comes to these fucks. And hey, maybe if I think I'll actually find stuff like this that I'm actually supposed to find. I can pick up the hunting rifle, whichever that I have. I probably am going to want to hold on to the hunting rifle. I'm always going to have to deal with some of the chainsaws that uh, that manuscript page pretty much implied. I don't know what's over there, but I see a light, and that's probably a pretty alluring prospect right now. You'll pardon the poignancy of that vocabulary. <laughs> what? Oh, that's what he said. I was like, that's not a gameplay hint, is it? Doesn't relate to this game, at least. I 
that apparently will allow us to go to this house on the water. It's like rickety and always on the verge of falling into something, I don't know. what it was. It might be the movie version of the perfume. It's like a house that's always... Uh, that's on top of a river. There's a bunch of earthquakes and eventually it just falls, but I think that's it. I feel like I was thinking of something else in particular. I just can't remember what it would be right now. This place, I'm very grateful. This is like some kind of weird mill. Can I... How do we do the freaking? I'm positive we can do some kind of a. Uh... Oh, fuck. I didn't want to do that. Wait, what are we kicking? This thing, I'm not sure why we're kicking this thing, but sure. I don't know if she's gonna be like, I'm positive we can do some kind of a melee attack. If I don't remember what number or the key or the button was for it. It's apparently not clicking the sticks, it's not any of the shoulder buttons, and it's not um, it's not the D-pad because it is for switching. It's apparently not the face buttons either, which doesn't leave me with much options. Oh. We got the flare back. <laughs> Give us a little bit of extra too. And the coffee thermos, so I guess this was a bit of a hidden area. And not actually where we had to go, even though I thought that's holding a well, quote unquote solving a puzzle like that. Would kind of necessarily have to lead into whatever the next actual Lots directions. Oh, here's a manuscript page. Also another dead end. The logging site was a mess. The modular office had been pushed off the cliff. Deputy Thornton climbed up from the wreckage, excited, breathing hard from the exertion. Nobody there. It's weird. Don't you think that's weird? Bored, Mulligan let out a mighty snort. Hell, it's always weird, Thornton. Just a question of sorting out what kind of weird it is this time around. It's always weird at the logging sites. I think that's necessarily a... Uh... Wait, did we not read the Barry and Elderwood one? Because I can notice that that one still has the... Uh... What shall we call it? The question mark. We're apparently missing three pages of the ones that it is possible for us to get right now in this chapter. One of them might be just being left behind a while back. Barry saw the darkness attack the visitor center. It made him a believer. The men Al said he'd shot, they hadn't been just locals on crank. Somehow the world had changed, like the channel had been switched without warning. You think you're watching a sitcom, and you're really watching a horror show. When the birds started attacking the cabin, Barry wasn't surprised, just terrified. So the birds are evil too. Well, I'm... This wasn't the right direction to go to find whatever it is we were supposed to find next, and it also wasn't up there. I'm not too sure what we might be able to do now. It's pretty much only looks like we can backtrack. Guess I'll check out the... I can't backtrack very far though, I'm pretty sure, because, yeah. 
I'm back trying to do at this point, even within this uh, general house area, we can't go all the way back to the beginning of it because that was a sheer drop. It's apparently too high for us to go in the other direction, so I guess we will have to go this way next. Okay, so we can't. Because the reason we can't actually mess with that stuff, that barrier there, is because we can just jump across. I mean, now what? Oh, okay. <laughs> Notice that. Yeah, it's the attic from the first Laurable game. I figure out who to shoot and not kill. Where's her face? Well, I would hope so. Yeah, I hear their tryhards. Not that I would know, of course. Shit. Okay, I guess fine, we'll check another battery. Darkness worse her face. It's usually pretty rude not to do that when you're around other people. Hmm. I see the manuscript patient there. Can I describe it from out here again? Which is bizarre, but there we go. turning its gaze toward me. Then the moonlight was blotted out by dark shadows that raced violently across the ground, moving too swiftly to be natural. Darkness gathered between the trees and melted again to reveal the Taken. No natural path had brought them here. Mm -hmm. It just feels like it's repeating itself, though. Like, there's not really anything there that we wouldn't... Uh, just kind of had gathered from the situation. What's going on out there? I don't know. Could be anything. Could be an ambulance. I don't know if that's like the exact sound that an ambulance could make, or it could be just like some dudes passing through to get somewhere else, which is probably more likely. I sure hope I'm not stuck back here now that I've uh, jumped down here. That would kind of suck. No, I don't think I am. Jump back up here, but... It's kind of weird that you can't go back there at all if there's nothing there. <laughs> Just gotta go around again. Just like last time. Time there was a big old gate in the way, just find a very clever workaround like this. Seems like there's probably something up there. If you want to go there first, or check out the corner here. I saw this gap in the bridge and the very static color that it had from this angle. Made me think that maybe there was another page on the bridge, but I guess not. I don't know if it's even possible for us to pick up any more of those pages at this point, or if we already found the last one. Are you the only one? No, of course you are not. That'd be too simple, you see. Oh, there's two of these fuckers. Oh, I'm sure that's gonna be fine. I'm trying to dodge. 
but I can't tell if I'm like... Oh shit, I'm using the rifle. It's probably a good idea at this point, to be fair. I didn't realize that I was using that, though. given the impression that maybe there's gonna be some kind of boss fight just based on that uh, chainsaw page, but I would probably, if that's the case, want to use save the rifle ammo for that. I guess that would probably have to happen pretty soon if it is going to happen. Why I should have just used a revolver for those two guys, I think. Okay, we made it to the campgrounds that are maybe close to the Lover Speak area. This place just looks suspicious. It seems a little too neat to just be able to walk through it. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I was waiting for. Teleporting? No. I can't I was gonna say I can tell if he's teleporting or what's going on, but I think oh for fuck's sake. These guys are moving so fast it feels like there's teleporting. They are teleporting now. Hmm. Can I use flares against this guy? I hope I can. Okay, that wasn't too difficult, actually. Guess I better go ahead and reload while I have a chance. Doesn't seem like uh, you can reload the rifle any faster than the default reloading speed like you can with the revolver. And just based on how easily that guy went down, I'm guessing that that might not be the only one that shows up. Nothing back here, are you sure? I don't think I wanna fuck around with quarters here. I get the feeling that they just made this, uh, like these bend points, kind of unnecessarily large in purpose, specifically so that. Uh, to give the illusion of the open woods, even though if you actually do look into them, you're gonna run into those walls very quickly. Hmm. Oh, that is fine. I mean, are we actually going back to, like, on the way back to the camp at this point? I'm not even sure. I thought that this was, like, a one-way trail. And, like, uh, goes only one route, I guess. But at least I was out of the woods. I? I guess I am. Can I just get an achievement that you can't see, but it says damn good cup of coffee, so yeah. They're just, like, uh, making the Twin Peaks reference very transparent there, at least. This place where we fought the, um, the first boss in this chapter, it might be. Close to renovation. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. No, I think I recognize this place now. It's like a uh, place that I'm thinking of is actually gonna be a little farther up ahead. I have to get the car from the locked garage. It would get me back to Barry faster. And the headlights were a welcome bonus. <laughs> I mean, do I have to get the car from the garage? Or is that just a suggestion? Can I have to be a little bit more... Uh, 
more straightforward with me here. How about I check out the bathrooms? What's in the ladies' room? Oh, there's an ice cream page on the way to the ladies' room. Oh, and that's one. Oh, never mind. It's not the last one that's listed here, but there is one that I thought I had missed before. The FBI agent's command froze me in place. I considered surrender. It was all falling apart anyway. I could give in, let someone else deal with it. But it felt all wrong. Cold instinct, his posture, the way he held the gun. He was no friend. Shots ringing in my ears, I leaped for the hole in the fence and stumbled into the darkness beyond. So he's shot up by some FBI agent who is not his friend. Oh, this place doesn't have very... doesn't look very finished. Checkpoint reached. Well, we haven't found the garage keys. Just been poking around uh, in a place with no light. And yeah, I thought this place had at least some lights. And hey, look, it actually has the stuff installed. Garage key had to be somewhere nearby. The garage key was right there, and oh boy, tell it. Well, let's stop to watch the show, I guess. You can create it, shape it, but as the story grows, it starts wanting things of its own. Change one thing, and you set off a chain reaction of events that spreads through the whole thing. The characters have to be true to themselves. The events need to follow a logic that fits the story. A single flaw, and the magic is gone. The story dies. Alice dies. Okay, I don't remember if I made this remark about this game, but does that mean that we're crazy and... Oh. <laughs> That's why the, that door was closed. Does that mean that we're crazy and our wife is not real and it's like Mark the Ninja, or... Maybe it's like, um... Maybe it's like the celebrated Goosebumps movie with Jack Black. Where one of the characters only exists thanks to magic bullshit. Well, we found a garage key, so I guess we just make a beeline for the the car now. All right, is there a separate driving section? <laughs> there is a separate driving section. Okay, I don't know if I was expecting this. Time to commit some manslaughter. Guy isn't even like vulnerable though, is he? Oh. There we go. Gotta be thorough, you know. Well, where are we going though? I guess Barry's in that direction. Oh, we have the. I didn't even notice until now, but we actually have the car battery meter. Where the usual flashlight meter would be. And this way is just blocked off, I suppose. Can we get out of the car before we get to the destination? I wonder about that, because I would like to get out of the car now. Yeah, here we go. To get that thermos. I figured there would be something here. I guess we lost the doors on that side of the car, though. Better not worry about that. Hurt me at all with those axes while I'm in the car. Sorry, I don't want to know. Is there anything around here? I feel still somewhat compelled to look into it, but probably not enough that I'm actually gonna go off road with this thing. 
Oof. I'm trying to, yeah, reverse. And this car is hard enough. That's gonna make him whatever's left. Not that way. Wait, what? Is the car wrecked? Did I actually wreck? Oh shit, okay, never mind. <laughs> I, I evidently. Evidently thought a little bit too much of that. That's okay, we can make it through still. We just need to be more judicious and not get hit by stuff that I can't really see coming like that. They went out only after all those guys were dead. And at least under I'm on foot, I can never miss this. Do I want to go this way? This seems like it could be an interesting way to go. Could probably also be fairly conducive to not dying, given that there's a light up here. I'm just gonna be backtracking if I go this way, but I still feel compelled to do it, as you might imagine. So what if there's something back here that I didn't uh, see just because I didn't go this way in the car? I guess it's a little bit like in Deadly Premonition. 
Like, I feel like as soon as I realized that there would be a driving station in this, uh, oh, I can drive this. <laughs> I think I can drive a different car. I can't be sure that if I... Like, the moment I realized there would be a driving station in this... Instead of comparing it to Deadly Premonition, but I feel like it's even more so with the reala realization that if you um, run over a bunch of the monsters in the game while you're driving, it actually just wrecks the health of your car. Are we here? Exactly how far we have to go, but might as well take uh, like stop to take a look around. I'm pretty sure this is the place, yeah, where we fought the boss, the first boss in this chapter. Right after that, right after this, same guy that had been dying right there. So we've been here already, and yet I'm still taking another look here. Maybe we can get some infinite revolver ammo as usual. So, uh, does this lead right back out to the yard there, or...? Hmm. I mean, it kinda does, but I guess I can't open the gate to actually get there. So, nope, gotta go all the way around again. in here too, but you know, can't not be thorough when the stakes are like this. as well. Oof. Because we just literally can't keep using the character at this point. I get the feeling this thing is not going to move any farther. If we try to target... Somebody else come here? We'd like an evil, dark, possessed version of the police come here. Insert a joke here about redundancy, but... I mean, they, did they leave me something? More flares. So the revolver and the, the other flares, the ones that uh, have 50 of them now. I don't know if that means that I'm gonna run out of them any time soon. Oh, fuck. Maybe not, given that uh, my ever consistent insistence on not actually using those um, things. What the fuck? Like, I hadn't seen that guy do the fucking bomb rush attack before. Did he, go? Did he just like somehow destroy himself while doing that? No. Or maybe he did. Maybe this is like a completely different one. Maybe this is a completely different uh, helmet guy with a sledgehammer than all the ones that we've been fighting so far. I'm gonna die real soon. Yep, <laughs> right there. Okay, let's try that one more time. I guess now actually would be a good time to use flares and junk, but... Now that I actually know uh, the... Like, what volume of bullshit I'm gonna be faced with here, I can actually make that judgment. And make it with clarity. What if I go into this place? What if I try to uh, do the Wolfenstein cheapo... Uh,
strategy of door camping, I was gonna say, but apparently now this guy, I guess, just a little bit ahead of me. Don't know if I would actually be able to do that. Oh shit, <laughs> I actually did fire the flare gun because I didn't realize that I had it equipped. Well, it was probably for the better in that uh, location if I actually managed to survive here. He's more playing along at that point rather than actually being aware of which manuscript he's talking about. Maybe I can switch on the lights. Maybe I should do that. Maybe they'll create like a new checkpoint for me or something. Oh wait, no. It switches off the lights. I guess we already had some lights on in there even though it's, uh, it's a little too dim to even be able to tell. back here. And there's a whole bunch of birds. Sure enough, it's like a... It's like that part at the end of the Lion, Lion King world in Kingdom Hearts 2. Barry had talked about birds over the phone. And now we're heading right into where the birds are. That seems like a... Like a, the best possible course of action to just put ourselves into this place on purpose. Even coming from outside of it. Oh. I mean, I guess we did something. One cluster of the birds up there. Had to show up. I mean, if they continue to just come down here and try to face me in small organized groups, then sure that will be viable. Oh, there's another one. It's kind of right on top of me this time, though. until they're completely thinned out. Hmm. 
it seems like maybe this can be proceeding a little bit more um, smoothly. Seems like there's pretty much just as many up there as there were before. I can kinda tell you that. Barry? You can open the door now. They're gone. <laughs> okay, I guess the rest of them just dissolve into nothing. Sorry for thinking you were having a psychotic episode, man. Just let me in, I guess. I to the town to ask around about a man fitting the kidnapper's description. He'd go through the archives of the local paper. Perhaps he could learn something. Anything about the island and the cabin that had disappeared. The man wanted a manuscript. I had to try to write him one to get Alice back. For me, the supernatural had always been nothing but a metaphor for the human psyche, a tool to use in writing fiction. Now, it was happening for real, and I couldn't put a single word on paper. Barry Wheeler speaking. This is Rose. Rose? I found Mr. Wake's pages. Oh, you sweet, brilliant girl. Could you and Mr. Wake come get them? I live in the trailer park outside the town. We'll be there in less than an hour. See you soon. Have a great day. Hope you come back soon. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the old dear diner. Good girl. I say well then also half not realizing the fact that that's probably gonna be another uh, copyright ID sign but hey. I don't know how much I can really do about that given that I didn't realize it immediately oh well and the fact that I just preemptively assume that that's gonna be uh, Part of the game, <laughs> for the very same reason that I was talking about a while ago. About it being delisted temporarily some time back. We're just gonna skip at this point. On Alan Wake, Alice has been kidnapped. I can't tell anyone except my agent Barry. Damn it, Barry, the killer! You're my best friend, and I'm worried that you're not right in the head. The ransom is a manuscript I supposedly wrote that's coming true before my eyes. It happened just the way it was on that page. This is so dark. I have found only a few scattered pages. I want the entire manuscript. The deadline ah. is in two days. I found Mr. Wake's pages. Good girl. How the hell did she get her hands on the manuscript anyway? I don't know. She's resourceful. I told you you were too hard on her. Listen, I found out all sorts of interesting stuff while I was digging around. Yeah. Mr. Wake, it's Sheriff Breaker. We have an FBI agent here, Agent Nightingale. FBI? He's anxious to see you. You'd better come to the station. Okay, I'll be right over, Sheriff. Let's make this quick, huh? Help you folks. My name's Randolph. I'm the manager. We're looking for Rose. Works as a waitress down at the diner. Rose, sure. Nice girl. Who wants to know? I'm Alan Wake. The writer, huh? I heard on the radio you were visiting. Well, I'll show you her trailer. That Rose, she's a nice girl. Always pays her rent on time. As I was saying, Al, I found all sorts of weird stuff from the local newspaper's archives. This place is crazy. 
disappearances, mysterious deaths, urban legends come true, and get this, most of this stuff takes place around Cauldron Lake. All right. Okay. Anyway, there was an island there owned by a guy called Thomas Zane. Now, some of the articles I found about him make him out to be a famous writer, but I ran a bunch of searches, couldn't find a single thing he wrote. Zane was heavily into diving, so much so that the place came to be called Diver's Isle. But the volcano under the lake erupted in 1970, and Zane went down with the island. <laughs> Well, are we now going to get uh, another deadly premonition moment where the woman's trailer is somehow going to turn into a massive hammer space dungeon that we have to go through? There's got to be something around here that's going to be making it worthwhile for me to actually look around. Well, I'm waiting. Already in front of you, as you can see. It's on you if you want to be slow like that. What if I just want to grab some of this min stove clear? Just follow me. It's not far. Well, maybe not, but you know. There's going to be some other stuff to look at around here, surely. Is that a wrecked boat? Just over there. That seems a little out of place. Listen, I got things to do. This place don't run itself. Well, could have fooled me based on how. Slowly, you're taking it as well. Not that. It was there in the morning, as if it had fallen from the sky. But it would take a tornado to lift something like that. We're damn lucky it didn't crush any of the trailers. I mean, is this the trailer? It's gotta be at least in that direction, so watch in the other direction. Okay, see, I told you there's gotta be something over here. It's my coffee thermos now. Sorry, whoever just left it out there. I, a complete stranger who is not from anywhere around here, have come to steal your stuff. Can we just get a move on? I'll get a move on in front of you now, as I have been for some time. And his dogs. Granny Claus Clam Chowder Sparkling River Special. For 54? No, for $4. I misread that. The Guardian Chicken Parmesan. Saney Chicken Fried Steak. I guess it's supposed to be like a... Maybe a pun on Thomas Sane that the guy was talking about before. Small Ski Salad Rabbit Food. Oh. I'm a little disappointed that the rabbit food is not rabbit food. Well, is this place or not? Come on. I'm literally waiting for you at this point. A local girl, Barbara Jagger, drowned in Cauldron Lake just a week earlier. They were lovers. Sure, Jagger's a local spook store. The scratching hag comes for you in the dark. Childish stuff like that. Anyway, Al, I'm just getting to the best part. All of the articles about this stuff were written by Cynthia Weaver. I asked around, and she's that crazy bag lady you met. What, the lamp lady? She can be a little loopy, but she's not homeless or anything. Yeah, anyway, she knew both Jagger and Zane before they both died, and she had some kind of a breakdown. Hey, <laughs> someone has actual sunflowers growing here. wonder who that could be. I wonder if that's not a very scuffed uh, reference attempt that I'm having here. I mean, I can actually see into the inside of this trailer, so this might actually be the final trailer that we're to get to after all that walking. Oh, there's Barry. And yeah, actually, I honestly forgot that uh, 
the game had already introduced a version that was, I guess, this universe equivalent of the Log Lady from Twin Peaks. Which, funnily enough, also had an equivalent in Deadly Premonition. Except in that one she had a pot, I think. Instead of a log. And I guess in this one she has a lamp. Alright, can we get there now? I mean, I'm pretty sure that I beat you to it based on what I saw over there, and the fact that Barry's now the one waiting. See, he's clearly got a better grasp on Mister? where things are. This trailer. You mind me asking what you want with her? We're just here to talk to her, pal. To help, shall we? Welcome to... to... Oh dear, Mr. Wake. I'm... I'm so glad you're here. Rose, you have my manuscript? Oh. Oh, yes. Yes. Please, come in. Hey, this is really good! Rose. Yes? My manuscript. I really need it. I understand. I know what you need. A muse to inspire you. Oh, for Barry? She doesn't have anything. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, what's... Oh. Barry! What? What? skin. I'm too weak to stop it. You must turn the lights on. I promised I'd come visit you and your lovely wife. You must finish what you started. I insist. You must turn the lights on. Hung over. Only anger kept me going. Well, I guess that the evil possessed woman was nice enough to put us in the bed, but Barry's still over there. Help me. She's an old woman in a funeral dress. I call her Barbara Jagger. She's very strict. I'm writing faster and faster. My manuscript is being heavily revised. The edits are getting very aggressive, and each day there's less of me and more of her. I hate it, but I know she's right. She promises me I can save Alice this way. She knows more of this than I do, about the complex incantation I'm attempting, about this place. She's worked with another writer under similar circumstances, Thomas Zane. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. I'm getting close. I can feel it. <laughs> Is she talking about, like, the real Barbara Jagger there, or maybe the... The evil darkness demon that is apparently using her as an avatar now, if I'm understanding the situation correctly. It's a little hard to tell. I had less than 12 hours left to meet the kidnapper. All I could do was get Barry into the car, work something out once I got on the road. Didn't you have 48 hours? Wasn't that what the... What can I get you today? Coffee? I couldn't work up much hate for Rose. Something had used her to get to me and left its mark. Well, what about Barry? We're just leaving him here. Sugar on the counter there. Would you like to hear today's specials? Thank you. Have a nice day. Come back soon. Barry was out of it. He was way too heavy to carry. I guess we're just gonna leave him here and assume that he's gonna be fine though. In this place where the my gun and flashlight were gone. I'd have to find a way to get Barry into the car as quickly as possible. There was no time to waste. Okay, now I guess we are gonna try to get Barry out of here. Not leaving this uh, 
place where apparently the darkness also has a hold. Mr. Randolph liked Rose. That little smile she had. How she was still sweet when life had tried so hard to make her bitter. It wasn't any of his business what she did in her trailer. But those strangers, the writer and his smart-ass sidekick, looked like trouble. And they'd been in there for hours, way past her normal bedtime. He reached for the phone and called the sheriff's station. I mean, that would probably be beneficial to us right now, but apparently no help has come. So just get over there. Try to get over there. There's this. I just stepped outside to catch a breath of fresh air. Let me tell you, the weather's getting heavy. Nights like this make me especially glad I'm here talking to you and not home in bed. Once, once the weather takes a turn like this, I can't sleep at all. It's all tangled bed sheets and dark thoughts, punctuated by the occasional plunge into nightmare. <laughs> is it just me? Well, perhaps it is. But I hope I can make the night a little bit easier to get through. Caller, you're on KBF FM. Hey, hi, it's Walt Snyder. What's on your mind, Walt? Well, I am the way you are, but... Well, you sound like a man with a problem, Walt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had a, uh, you know, uh, argument with Danny. You know, Danny. And uh, then I got in trouble with the law. You know, and um, I'm just... Well... I heard something like that, Walt. outside looking up at the sky above our broadcast tower thinking the same thing. What are you waiting for, Walt? I don't know. I, you know, something's gonna happen. You know, I gotta, I gotta, I, I think I better go. Well, uh, Walt, uh, maybe... No, th thanks, Pat. Uh, well, good luck to you, Walt. Hang in there. Uh, let's take a little break, folks. This weather's really something else, huh? This, would this weather be any different from what we've been having the last couple of nights? Have we been assaulted by horrible nightly beings? Every time we step outside. Are we gonna get Barry out of there though? Because right now we're just gonna try to get back out to the edge of this place. Well, that guy doesn't look like a monster yet. Oh, you're gonna get it now. <laughs> knows what you've done to that poor girl. This is Agent Nightingale, FBI! Get him up, Hemingway! You're under arrest! You move a muscle, I'll unload right in your goddamn face! Stay right where you are, little Must be the guy that we thought in the manuscript vision that we. But there was no way I'd miss my appointment with the kidnapper. Boy. I suppose we're just gonna try to actually evade right now instead of making any kind of an attempt to fight. We don't even have a gun though, do we? Yeah, we don't have anything, so. We didn't even have the flashlight, actually, by the looks of things. So we're just gonna try to keep up the... You know, now that we don't actually have the randomly spawning... Oh shit. Randomly spawning dark creatures to... To contend with. Probably a good idea to actually stay off the beaten path. At least when we can. Probably an even better idea to do it when we can't be shot out like this. Ah, oh, shit. I 
can over ten I think we can dodge bullets probably. Okay, I think I see the problem here. There's like snipers on outside. Something which I had not noticed before. Maybe you do have to stay, I guess, in the middle too. <coughs> Hide behind these rocks. I thought the snipers were actually like directly above me on the cliff. Or at least the marksman. keep this up for, but, you know. We apparently got this way more figured out than I do, if they can go as far ahead of me as it seems they have. I spy a manuscript page. What does this one say? Let's take a break to take a look. The darkness that wore Barbara Jagger's skin slept in the dark place that was its home and prison. It was hungry and in pain. It dreamed of its nights of glory when the poet's writing had called it from the depths and given it a brief, terrible taste of power and freedom. The rock stars had stirred it from the deep sleep the poet had sunk it back to in the end. When it sensed the writer on the ferry, it opened its eyes. It's okay. The rock stars? I wonder how exactly we're supposed to read the rock stars part of that, but... Is it like rock stars like Mick Jagger, or is it rock stars like some kind of metaphor with stars and being similar to rocks in a more literal sense? Boy, I have, <laughs> I have no idea what's happening, but I guess that was a sign that... Uh, in the dark evil stuff is back at it again. The car was intact in order to conceal here this stuff. <laughs> Goodness. Well, no, we're not armed right now. <laughs> They're definitely not going to be able to track us by way of trying to figure out where the gunshot sounds are coming from. Okay, so I guess the tree was fell instead of turning like a wall of dark, preventing us from going in that direction, but didn't know how the strange old lady got in her trailer, and she looked wrong. <laughs> the woman showed her teeth in an approximation of a smile and traced a finger down Rose's cheek. Pretty girl, she said. Rose felt as if she was falling asleep, but her knees didn't buckle. The crone spoke in a whisper, her words ice cold and dark in Rose's ear. Looks like that didn't take a lot of effort. So to assume that that rose was different from the rose that we very superficially witnessed during the whole uh, actually coming into town sequence at the start of the game. what they're shooting at, but guess we're gonna be crossing paths with them again. And though it seems like the spooky dark fog is also back. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure that did that little forget about this particular until pretty much right now, but seeing these um black dark fog effects again kinda reminded me that I'm pretty sure one of the things that I did um and reduce the motion sickness, which I guess must be doing something because I don't feel nearly as sick right now as I did the first time I played this. At least not yet, but one of the things I did was get a mod for this version of the game that 
apparently produces the everywhere I went circling me the cops didn't stand a chance they were after a writer not a monster reduces or just completely um, removes the motion blur when you're panning the camera around but not one from like for example that effect Apparently the evil darkness that we're contending with right now is able to just leave cars in very awkward positions, so... Never doubt what may or may not happen. <laughs> oh, I think they might have found us. Unless they're just gonna completely ignore that. Assume that they somehow are not aware of where we are, and yet we're also now being assaulted by. Or at least I thought we were being assaulted by the regular enemies, but maybe not. Oh. Wait, were they the birds instead? I guess I would explain why they just uh, vanished into nothing. After the camera angle, they're just kind of implied that they were right behind us. Oh boy. Yeah, if they're able to do that, I guess I would maybe explain how the plane ended up in the middle of the forest and how that boat or whatever it was ended up in the trailer park. It's prone to doing these unsolicited relocations of scrap. Can't tell what's up there, but I guess that must be where the helicopter ended up just now. Wonder if anyone else noticed that. I mean, it did make a bit of a little bit of a flash, a little bit of a bang. Yes, pretty much all we got out of that though is that Barry got captured by them. Which is not surprising considering what just happened. Over there. What's making light in that direction though? I mean there's some kind of radio tower or something there. Lights at the radio station in the distance. And the radio station. Actually have a sign that says radio station. I it does. Okay. Kinda of hard to make out from this far away with the trees in the way, but that's pretty to the point. Doesn't even have any kind of proprietary name. I imagine that the broadcast tower in the distance was part of the local radio station. Maine seemed like a decent guy. Perhaps he could give me directions to the coal mine. Maine being the same guy that we heard in the radio earlier, I guess, before we get out of the, in the trailer park area. I did not catch back then that his name was Maine, though. Which also seems very on the nose. We still don't have anything to attack with, right? Yeah, we don't have the flashlight or the gun. Or flares or anything of that persuasion. Seems 
Just like this might help. A little bit nicer being able to look around without having to worry about uh, combat being a. Uh, have to see if I could fix it and try again. Constant threats, so we can actually look around. So I guess that didn't uh, hold out for long, or at least not for long enough that we could actually make use of this. Fix it and try again. Is it just like a time limit kind of thing, where I have to turn this thing on and then quickly rush over there to the uh, just kick? It was made of that darkness to the point that where we shined a strong enough light on it that just, it just disappeared without any kind of a greater fanfare that actually seems more convenient than anything on this. That gate just didn't exist at all until the darkness decided to manipulate it. So if it was just like a normal metal gate and we didn't have any way to open it, that probably would have been a, more of an obstacle. That might be another one right there. How are we gonna handle this one? And can we check out what's behind this little shack right here? I suppose we can, but no great fanfare. So what do we have in here? Oh, an actual flashlight. I guess we're gonna have to go back to hustling again now. With our type of gameplay we've come to expect. Can we just leave the other one alone? I feel like that would be probably a better idea to conserve uh, the light, or at least just not use the boosted light. Just let the other one recharge. Seems to. Yeah, the. Phantom shaking effect does seem to linger on a little bit longer after the main object has been cleared out. That looks a little strange. It took me a minute to recognize the flashbang grenades. They were an ideal weapon for my situation. So this time we do not have a gun, but we have a bunch of flashbangs, really. And a flashlight. Well, we don't have anything that would make sense to throw a flashbang at this point. But now that we have them, I get the feeling that it won't stay that way for long. I want to go this way, I probably don't want to go this way, but... We're back in the danger zone, I would expect. Pretty sure I hear, f yeah, footsteps around my own. That's not a great sensation. I'm gonna see if I can just coward my way out of here for now. Just run away without using a expanding anything right now. Even though that's probably not the intended course of action, though, well, because it sort of depends. And One of the other things, but now here we go. And here's another call. You're on KBFFM with Pat Main. It's Milt Peabody, Pat. What's on your mind, Milt? Well, I live near the trailer park, Pat, and there's a big ruckus going on over there. Well, that's just up the road from me, too. Uh, what's going on, do you know? I don't know, but there's a bunch of police cars there, lots of sirens, a helicopter buzzing around, and I think I heard some gunshots. Gunshots? Yes, sir, like from a pistol. So can you find out what's going on? Because it's just next door and they're popping off guns there. They're still 
shooting? No, it was maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. It sounds serious, Pat. I'm telling you, it don't sound like no party. Well, I, I'm certainly going to give the station a call, Milt. Okay. You'll hear it here as soon as I hear from them. Okay, thanks. Anyway, back to some easy listening. Or something, anyway. I don't know if I would qualify for that description, but... Surely this will help you take your mind off of things. Well, okay, maybe now is a uh, good time to use the flashbang. Which apparently is not even gonna destroy all of these guys. Hmm. Even though this is probably the guy that I would have been, like, had the most vested interest in being destroyed by that grenade. Uh, what? I think I see a platform up here and I'm kind of wondering if I can get up there. There should be anything for me to find up there, but just, uh, I guess going around doesn't seem like that's very likely thing that will be possible. I guess we better keep moving. Like, maybe if, uh... There's another group of people that decides to chase after me that isn't just this guy. Oh fuck. <laughs> this guy with his fucking bomb rush attack. It's not even the same kind of enemy that we've been fighting so far that did that. It was the, uh... <laughs> the guy that, I guess, had the same stats as this guy, but instead of being a corrupted FBI agent or what have you. But instead, just a dude with a sledgehammer. I'm pretty sure it was mid-dodge there. Oh, dang it. Alright, fine. Oh, of course. <laughs> you, guys, you guys could have uh, afforded to show yourselves like a second sooner. That was very rude of you to not have done that. I don't think that I can lift off this car though. It's kind of weird to... There we go. Let's put this here and not have it... ...be anything except like a landmark or what have you. It does look like we're getting close to the place we're probably trying to get to right now, which is the radio station. <laughs> okay, that even caught a guy that was just slightly off-screen that I hadn't even realized was there. Surely, at this point, we can make it to the building without having to expend any more of our weapons. Or at least we would if this guy wasn't right where it was, I guess. That massive shovel that I thought might have been some kind of comic uh, large, like, fucking Silent Hill axe or something. Oh boy. Well, because of that log, I couldn't really dodge that effectively. Can I just get over there? Okay. I did have to use a battery, I think, but at least we still have nine flashbangs. Probably be quite helpful. I guess he must not be. He must not have his eyes open if he didn't notice that. Let's see if Main has anything around here that I can scavenge before I get in there. Like, perhaps this... This coffee thermos. Well, he evidently does appear to have a car, but I guess we're not just gonna start carjacking like at the end of the previous chapter. I'm not really carjacking if there's nobody else in the car, just, uh, I don't know, stealing hot wiring. The Night Owl. I mean, is, are those white parts just supposed to be the reflection? Because if you look at them, that's like the whites of his eyes, and they just look a lot more comical. All night, every night. Every bird. KBFFM, the bones of white falls. Well, how could you tell that? He didn't seem like he... turned around. Until after he said that, but... Oh, oh, never mind. Whoa, 
Well, well, everyone calm down. Put the gun down and we're all friends here, right? Cool your jets, Nightingale. We got him. <laughs> oh, shit. What the hell's the matter with you? There's a civilian in there. I think he just really wants to shoot him and wake in the head, no matter what. So many cliffs, it was ridiculous. That's what you get for naming a book the sudden stop. It was probably good I hadn't had the chance to tell Maine where I was going. I'd have to lose the cops and find my own way to the mine. Tell you know, HP Lovecraft, more like Thomas Ligotti. You know, uh, Dan Brown, more like Jane Jensen. Nightingale stared through the broken studio window into the dark woods. He turned around, started to walk out, but Maine grabbed his arm. Young man, you almost shot me. You don't shoot off rounds at people like that. What's the matter with you? Nightingale shook his arm free, marched out. His cheeks burned with rage and humiliation. Maybe someone who actually would have, uh... I don't know, was... I remark how that's at least a little bit more original about kinds of people who would have had that kind of thing in their stories, like, I don't know, Richard Mason, Arthur Mackin, all these people who wrote about spooky detectives. Fucking that guy who made Flaxman Law, I forgot his name, Heskett Richard? I think that's it, yeah. Oh shit. I don't have a gun yet, right, so I guess I'm gonna have to actually use this. I don't think the flare is gonna kill those guys, it's just gonna make them vulnerable. Oh, sorry guys, I made the... Well, I tried to make the safe zone for myself, I guess, even if you go here, you go. here's a revolver. Now I can fight you normally. I think. Uh, where are we going though? Just because you know, use the actual minimap this time. Well, minimap quote unquote, it's more like a compass radar thing. I, I was gonna say, I can't tell why that noise is the noise that I'm hearing right now. I can't really see anyone in my vicinity that might. Warrant that kind of speed, but well, then I could. There was no sensible reason for the power company work lights to be here. It was almost as if they'd been left for someone like me to use. I guess you could look at it that way. I mean, that's how video game puzzles work. I should know, I've been playing lots of adventure games. Sometimes. Sensibility is your enemy when it comes to uh, a thing. Darkness control to take. Right. I think we also, uh, we also got that impression before. Oh boy. Oh, we did just get the shotgun, but we also have a uh, flashbang, right? Oh, yeah. Ah, shit. Oh, well, it's gotta be a. Uh... Okay, I'm just gonna pop. I thought I had popped a flashbang, but apparently it was a flare instead. I'm pretty sure I have the flashbang selected. Okay, everyone please come into the cabin again. Like you did before. Thank you, that's very, uh... I appreciate it. You didn't cooperate. How good. Save the actual flares for later, it does seem more practical to have the, have the flashbangs as a thing. I don't know, I'm not really sure how much these things would have helped me, to be honest with you. I'm not sure if those things would have been that effective against the... 
Ah, the dudes just now. I do get a feeling that there's gonna be more of them coming though. We're still getting that fog effect. They all stay on? I don't think they stay on for very long if they stay on permanently at all. Light, you can hurt them, yeah. If you haven't figured that out by now, you probably are not gonna have a great time. So I guess we have to go that way, but I also see something else over that way. Though I see like a... A single very distinctive shine coming from a manuscript page, yes. What does this one say? Bulldozer's engine roared to life. Mud and rocks flew as it fought for traction. It crashed the concrete wall and landed heavily in the yard. <laughs> An animal that would have shaken its head after the impact fixed its eyes on me and charged. Of course, it had no head, nor eyes. Shadows crawled on its form, twisting it into a monster. And then, it came for me. Well, if the evil shadow corruption can also control machines, that means that it must be more powerful than the X-Parasites from Metroid. <laughs> At least machines that have no bizarre... like sci-fi biological components within them. Well, that's pretty much, I think, the only reason why the... Uh, <laughs> the B.O.X. robot was a boss in Fusion. <laughs> Free manuscript page right here, anyway. Sarah trusted her gut, and her gut said Agent Nightingale was an asshole. He felt wrong, and it wasn't just the smell of stale booze. It was in the way he flashed his badge, pulled rank, the look in his eyes when he wanted answers. Where was Alan Wake? What was this about an accident? Where was his wife? And most importantly, why did she let Wake go? He wouldn't answer her questions. Federal business was all he'd say. Mm -hmm. So I don't know anything about Nightingale, except that apparently he just wants Wake dead, no matter what, or captured or something, but he probably just wants him dead more than anything, based on how gun happy he was in the previous scene. So maybe he's some kind of bizarre, somewhat extraneous person, person with a uh, Knowledge that we ourselves are not quite privy to yet either, with some kind of ulterior motives like the kidnapper guy. I don't know what his deal is either, fully. Oh, sure. Hello? The most stubborn man I've ever met. Alice? Alice? I'm here. I'm so alone here. It's all gonna go to hell. You need to be careful. Cooperate. The connection had been terrible, but that wasn't the only thing that hadn't been right with the call. She sounded wrong somehow, but she had called me. It was a bit like those puzzles in the... in a couple of adventure games, really, where you have to... Some kind of awkward spliced message by splicing together bits of audio recordings. Maybe Darkness had got an inspiration from Torrent's Passage or Gabriel Knight too. Or maybe it has just watched too many of those those uh like prank phone call videos that use soundboards. But 
didn't feel like trying to sell Alan Bail Bond, so he just used his wife's voice instead. Oh, hello. Okay, well, okay, not quite sure who even hit me there, I guess. That must have been a projectile, but... I guess they can shoot me from behind the trees with those axes, which... I feel like I could probably buy a... Like a gunshot working from behind those trees, but... Something big like an axe, maybe not so much. Come on. I feel like that would make it lose too much uh, momentum. Okay, there's a river. I was kind of wondering if we were going to be able to go in this direction at all, but I guess that's a no. And I also skipped the manuscript page, because he was just in the middle of one of his little inner monologue things. But now we can't find out what it says. Wrenched itself loose from the <clears throat> steel framework. Wrapped in darkness, it floated in midair, twitching. For a moment, I didn't understand what I was looking at. The heavy object lurched at me with impossible force. I threw myself out of the way, but just barely. When I turned my flashlight on it, it shook in a dark rage before it flew at me again. Pipe from the bridge. So I guess the darkness is able to use railway bridge up ahead and a warehouse of some sort on the opposite shore. I hoped I could find a car from there. It's able to use some bizarre telekinesis, but it's not gonna choose to do it like for example with this detached rotor thing. We know that probably would be deadlier. I don't know if that's really gonna happen though, but evidently nothing would be surprising at this point. Nothing that has to do with the stuff that we have read in the, in the pages. So yeah, there's lots of pipes here for certain. I mean, I guess we were also able to uh, determine that it had, had been... I guess using the birds to attack the... Well, this thing didn't really come to life and attack me aggressively. But I think we know that it had been using the birds to attack the helicopter and... Okay, this could be a problem if we literally can't get past this because of the physics being a, an obstacle. Can we get on top of it? There we go. The darkness that was pursuing me was growing stronger. And it was taking over everything in its path. And it's also apparently able to just throw cars around like it ain't no thing, so... Now it's just gonna break this thing apart, and that's it. Can't really tell what's happening, but I guess this is probably a sign that we should, uh, oh, fuck. We should either get out of here as quickly as possible, or just uh, try to neutralize these evil... These evil telekinesis objects that I guess look a little bit more like the, um, oh jeez. Like those uh, things in the kitchen from Vampire the Masquerade that you get attacked by. When you go to the Haunted Hotel stage early on in that game. Why not we can get out of here now, right? That we've destroyed every single object that was in here. Apparently there's more. And apparently we can't use the flash dodge to avoid damage from those like with regular melee attacks from enemies. so I have to assume that we did good. What do we have here? And the door shut right in his smug face. He pleaded for me to open the door. True to form, the asshole actually thought I would obey. I had no sympathy left. No guilt either. Not for him. 
I took a moment to savor the scream. I bet I had a smile on my face. It was all that I had time for. The dark presence was inside the lodge with me. <laughs> so I was definitely on the inside at that moment, and yet... That was a bad thing, and yet the guy outside was also... Interested in writing. Stephen King had been a source of inspiration to me. I thought about all the inanimate objects that had come to life in his books. <laughs> Did you read the Mangler? Good horror story. Certainly not the protagonist. That's what makes them fun. This was anything but. The darkness could possess anything. And it was Heavy duty flashlights. I have no idea what makes this one different, but okay. I guess we got a heavy duty one now. Oh dear. I mean, that's pretty much a meme in fucking Stephen King stories. I mean, get me wrong, they can... I mean, I would honestly like to see the... Like, be able to give a more in-depth commentary on Stephen King stories, but... Uh, that I may have mentioned at some point in the past. Probably way in the past, because I have no memory of doing it any time recently, but... I have basically one instance of uh, one time in which I tried to read a Stephen King book, and it apparently was a bit of an outlier in his work, it was sell. And not only that, but I managed to only get about a fourth through it before the bag that I had been carrying it around in was stolen, so yeah. I did manage to get a few more of his, though. And, uh, unlike that one, the ones that I actually have on my shelf right now are not translations, so probably would be a better way to look into that anyway. Andre I've definitely been interesting is, like, the actual book of The Shining, though. It's kind of infamous how much of that was apparently changed for the Kubrick movie, which is what everyone knows. But, strangely enough, that's not one of the ones that I have on my shelf right now. I have, like, Misery, I have, um, that collection of stories that has apt pupil, which I don't remember what the collection as a whole is called. I have Carrie, which was his first one. And... Probably have a few more, but I can't remember what they are right now. I should probably start with Carrie. Even my own insistence on the, oh for fuck's sake, in the importance of uh, precedence. Which is something that I do earnestly believe in, by the way. Any better now. I could just use uh, one of my flashbangs or what have you, but... Or I could just take like three hits to the face at the same time and die. Darkness could possess anything. It's getting closer. God. I didn't really expect the, the checkpoint to also save the uh, like point in the voice clip when it was in the middle of... Alright, let's try that again. I guess we actually are going to use a flashbang for this. Seems like a good place to use it. I also use a flare, but I get the feeling that would be a problem as far as uh, that's not gonna make the guys go away, and they're probably gonna keep on chasing me after we. Ah, the gate's already open, and we're through it. Now I get the feeling that 911 isn't gonna be very helpful to me right now. Okay. Now let's just go ahead and chill and wait for this thing to finish opening. There we go. Ten in middle now. I'm sure you can just kind of turn your body sideways and squeeze through that a little bit sooner, Alan. I do that all the time. Because I am not a fan of human contact. Outside of very specific moments. Oh. In 
die if you can hurt them. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we got that Mabel already. I'm pretty sure we got that exact Mabel from uh, the fluorescent paint a while ago, even. I gotta tell you that I'm doing a lot better this time as far as not getting hit with the motion sickness. I guess the setting adjustments that I did really did work. Which I think was actually turning off the sync, which is. Uh, I think pretty ironic since it usually has the opposite effect, or I want to do the opposite if I want to avoid motion sickness. And that thing with uh, removing the panning uh, motion blur. And also not making it so that the uh, flashlight beam is always in the center of the screen. Apparently that's got to do with it too. You say that's pretty on the nose as well. I'm glad you changed your minds about this. Ancient customs, local mythology. My editor loves this kind of stuff. Well, Mr. Durlith, we don't want to feel like we're on exhibition, but you have demonstrated the seriousness of your intent. Oh, I am serious. Really, just do your thing. I'll stay out of your way and observe. Actually, I thought you could assist us. I'm afraid we are a man short. It would provide you with an intimate perspective. Could I really? Of course, Mr. That's the least I... What would I have to do? Oh, here. Let me show you with a kiss. I, um, I... I guess they didn't want to be on the nose to the level where they call the thing with the Faust and the Young Shubni Gorath, but I'm pretty sure Shubni Gorath also never did anything that was just like, hey, we're gonna use human host and apparently they're gonna do the poison ivy meme, except instead of just poisoning whoever gets the kids, it's gonna be more like a face hugger situation. The darkness surged towards me. Sucking everything loose from the ground into its depths, tugging at my clothes. I saw the flare the kidnapper had dropped and threw myself towards it just as I felt my feet leave the ground. The darkness embraced me with the force of a tornado. Somehow I managed to light the flare. The darkness roared and cast me away. I fell toward the dark waters of the lake far below. Is that what's gonna happen? How many of these can we get in this chapter? Apparently quite a few still, that's interesting. Don't know if we're gonna be able to fit a chapter before midnight hits, but I guess I'm gonna try it. Let's get as far as possible. Uh, revolver ammo. What about the uh, flare? What about the batteries? Surely I can pick those up. If I can just, you know... No, apparently I can't pick those up either. I think I have those maxed out as well, actually. Never mind. So no, probably a better idea to leave them there. <laughs> At least for the time being. Hmm. Yeah, you still have a good feeling we might. Oh, there's a bulldozer. Yes, we did get warned about that, but we've been getting so many of those, like, um, this is going to happen things in this chapter that I kind of forget about this one for a bit. Oh, shit. I haven't quite realized that I can also trick the bulldozer into, uh, killing these idiots for me. I suppose that makes as much, uh, sense as anything, though. Lithium batteries. What we need 
gates for um, this thing to not kill us while we're trying to wait for these gates to open. Oh, and for these fuckers now to get in the way. That is a bit easier said than done. Okay, here we go. Up to this thin iron gate that slowly opening will be too strong for you. This is a video game, you see. What objects will yield to the force of a moving vehicle will be uh, quite an arbitrary thing to determine. I get a feeling that it's probably going to be able to get over here eventually, though. Just wait around. I have never been this glad to see the sunrise. I had a couple of hours to get to the coal mine. I don't know if we're going to be doing a whole lot more combat in this chapter if it's already sunrise, unless we like get knocked out for another 12 hours. The coal mine wasn't far now. I if the coal mine is on the other end of this camera pan, that looks pretty freaking far. But I guess it must not be. I would meet the kidnapper, and he would give me Alice. I wouldn't give him any other choice. A drowning man will clutch at a straw. We can also drive... And I guess we can if you want. Maybe we need to drive actually, but... By little, without realizing it, I'd come to believe that the story in the manuscript was coming true. The current of its narrative had taken me deeper and deeper into dark waters. Alice had been taken from me. Barry was probably in jail. I was a fugitive from the FBI. The whole world taken over by the Dark Presence was trying to destroy me. It all felt real, but it matched a textbook case of insanity. I don't know about that. I don't know how much of it feels real and how much of it doesn't feel like anything, but... I don't get the feeling that if I go all the way back here, it's gonna be blocked off, but it's still gonna... Like having some kind of electrical. In time, I was being stalked. The bridge must have collapsed only moments after I'd crossed it. Hey, never mind. We get a little bit of an extra clip from him just to hand wave the fact that we can't uh, go in that direction again. But apparently, that is everything. I get a feeling that it's gonna be a better idea to just stick to using the car. supposed to get to. Rough road. That I can believe. We probably can't uh, drive over these physics slugs, but well, this bridge is also out. So it's not going to be just a matter of going over there or going down here, I would expect. Then I get a feeling that we are going to go over to the other side at some point. I guess since it's daytime and all, it's. it's free. Um, something. Fair game? Yeah, that's probably closer to what I was trying to say there. Fair game for exploring as much as I want, but I intend to just explore every single inch of this place. I'm gonna pull off another Ethan Carter, like I said, a game in which I never did anything because I was just trying to explore every last... every last particle of it that I actually could uh, get to. It's a pretty nice view, though. Not 
quite sure where I am now relative to the road or anything like that, but I see a chair here. <laughs> Alright. Is that supposed to be like a red room reference? Twin Peaks? Why not? I'll actually take a screenshot here. I don't know, it seems like a distinct frame. And you know, this whole thing about the forest and this expansive area and the trees and the rock and the cliff edge preventing you, or being the thing, I guess, the cliff edge being what prevents you from continuing in that direction. Might be a little bit of uh, what it called a uh, dark root garden in Dark Souls 1. Except that it's actually bright enough in here that you can see where you're going. We could drive this thing. Or we could check out what's inside here. Which is the same place that we checked out before. I don't think it can be, no. Well, it's probably the same object anyway. I want to apologize for abandoning you to that loop on the track last night, but I was detained. You see, I encountered a big shot G Man with an itchy trigger finger who could use a a lesson in manners and a boot in the ass. Not necessarily in that order, either. Now, folks, I know I'm not being very informative here, and I apologize for that. I really should just keep quiet, but I'm just so peeved right now, because some people just shouldn't be carrying badges. And I'm just glad that our Sheriff Breaker was there to straighten things out. And if someone I met last night is listening, let me just say, I'm sorry if my mouth got you in trouble. I'm pretty sure you're not the bad guy here. Godspeed, son. I hope you know what you're doing. Now, on a lighter note, I'll be talking to Dr. Nelson all morning. But first, a little music. Alright. Well, let's not stick around for that, then. I am a little bit curious about this whole, um... Oh shit, I don't want to fall off, but I fell off anyway. I was kind of curious if I could fall off into here. That was... I was segueing into it, I guess this is, uh... You know, a way to segue into that as anything. See if I can actually get out of here now, though. This might not be a thing that I can do, though. But I've just, uh... Unfortunately found myself in a bit of a trap here. I hope it's not terminal, but... Okay, here we go. Yeah, I was kind of wondering if I was supposed to go this way or if it was just supposed to... Uh, if I was just supposed to keep going down the road that's accessible from up there. Is this the way to the old coal mine? Because apparently the compass tells me that I can just keep going uh, this way. We can accomplish the same thing by going around. These are different paths that have the same end place that they lead to. I get the feeling that's it. I guess I, if I'm gonna keep going down that path though, I better get the car. Let's just actually get back on track here. Thank goodness that people just leave these cars uh, abandoned here and with the keys in and everything. And with gas. And in perfectly good condition. I feel like uh, out of all the things that Alan is experiencing right now, that makes him think that if he told anyone about it, he'd be insane. Or he'd be marked as insane. This would definitely be a big one of them. What about this place? I get the feeling that this is not quite the end place that I'm trying to get to. It's probably that place over there. But let's take a look around anyway. Probably be something here. Portables and septic, 555-325-9071. wonder if the numbers that aren't just the generic 555 area code thing mean anything.
Oh, another radio thing. Welcome back to KBF FM. Hope you enjoyed that tune. Now, Doc, you were talking about life and finding that special someone, that soulmate. Well, you were talking about that. I was saying I don't buy it. Well, see, to me, that's strange because I always pegged you as a hopeless romantic. <laughs> you got me there, Pat. But I think love's where you look for it. And you need to do a lot of looking, sure. But the idea that there's that one special person out there for you, and if you miss that chance, it's gone forever and you're forever incomplete. I mean, isn't that depressing? Or heck, childish even? Hey, there's plenty of fish in the sea. <laughs> and apparently a fisherman has a fishing analogy for everything. But what you're saying, isn't that a little harsh? Well, no. What I am saying is that your potential for finding that connection isn't limited to what's essentially a chance encounter. How is that harsh? Yeah, well, I guess that's a nice thought, but let me say something personal here. Okay. Now, well, I, I don't disagree with you exactly, but I can't really fit that together with what I feel, what I, what I felt for someone, because she was the one. She was. And she, I let her drift away from me. Maybe I didn't put in the work, I don't know, but, well, since then, and it, it was a long time ago, but, but since then, there hasn't been anyone, not like her. And I'm not saying I dwell on her or haven't moved on. I like my life. I, I'm not living in the past, but I do miss the way she completed me. You can't argue with the heart, Pat. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. I had kind of a scary experience last night, and let's just say it's shaken a few things loose. I'm going to be being slow, including my ability to segue out of that with another licensed music track. I'm just going to cut that off completely. I wonder if we're going to hear any more about that, or if that's just uh, like that's where you stick a pen into that. Ah, uh, that subplot. And let's switch over to this other car. To go the rest of the way. Is the coal mine? Is this not the coal mine? <clears throat> well, what is this place then? Is this, um... I mean, is that the coal mine down there? Is this part of the complex that's related to the coal mine, maybe? So I don't think you're the right ones, more to the point. There is a manuscript page. What does this one say? Vermont. Spying on the writer on the ferry had been a disappointment. His boss had made Wake out to be something special, but Maude hadn't been impressed. He'd gotten a good long look up the wife, though, and he liked what he saw. Maude had fantasized about goading Wake into a fight, but it hadn't happened. Still, he'd get his chance to see if the writer had anything in him. He'd been promised as much. By his boss? I guess Maude must be the guy that was, uh, that's the kidnapper that we're going after right now. I don't know what's up with the boss, though. What's up with pretty much anyone who would have known ahead of time what was going to happen here, even that, uh... Doesn't seem like Alan himself did before he got here. Alright, here we go. early. I was supposed to meet the kidnapper at noon in the main building. The coal mine was quiet. It was a museum now. Bright Falls Coal Mine Museum. While there were some earlier residents in the area of the tomb, genesis of the town, Bright Falls came with the founding of the Bright Falls Mining Company. 
and the opening of the Bright Falls coal mine in 1878. Although the work was hard and dangerous, many immigrants, Germans, Poles, Italians, Finns and Swedes among others worked the mines. Apparently all those people came here to this remote town in the Pacific Northwest. I'll look at it, but first the mining steadily declined and in the 20th century the seams... The seams? Yeah, the seams were rich. I'm reading the actual texture that way. <laughs> Stay there. But hard to get at, and the volcanic activity in the area made the mine shafts particularly dangerous. And I'm guessing that the stuff at the mine might be related to the... Uh, like the significance between the volcano and the lake or something. They made that connection. In 1970, a volcanic eruption below Cauldron Lake, while relatively minor, caused most of the deep mining tunnels to collapse or flood. 32 miners lost their lives in the calamity and all the mining around Bright Falls came to a final stop. Now many of the remaining buildings are protected as historical landmarks. Protected by whom, though? Also a page that I almost didn't see. With Nightingale gone and the night wind blowing in through the broken studio window, Maine stared at Sarah. The sheriff looked away. His voice shook with barely controlled anger. That boy's doing more drinking than thinking. I hope you know what you're doing, Sarah. He's got a sickness in his eyes. You take my word for it. He wants Wake for a reason, and it's not for anything good. Yes, yeah, I guess the only people right now who would know more than we do about whatever's going on would be the kidnapper and also the FBI agent. Maybe. Okay, interesting transition. I didn't want to go outside. Cops had to be looking for me. The new sun turned the place into a sauna. The day dragged on. Different scenarios ran through my mind. Ways of how I'd torture the kidnapper to get Alice back. Or the different horrible things he could have done to her. I imagined her dead. I had no way of knowing she was still alive. It was killing me. I was running on blind hope. It was all a waste of time. The bastard never showed up. Can I stay there for 12 hours? Until it got dark again? <laughs> okay. through being jerked around you by you. You want to see your wife alive? Because if you do, you better watch what you say to me. Do we understand each other? I want to talk to Alice. Yeah, and I want the manuscript. Don't keep me waiting, Wake. Hello? Hello! Ah! Uh, I'm gonna kill it! Well, I guess at least now I have an excuse for her. get to Mirror Peak. Apparently I can't leave this place. I mean, maybe he came by here, but... Oh. Maybe he came by here, but if we never left this room... Maybe closer than ever before. If we never left this room, we wouldn't really have noticed um, where he showed up, when he showed up. Well, now can we leave? No, doesn't seem like there's any other way to get out of this room except that, though. Unless we were gonna jump out here. Okay. So angry at that guy, I'm gonna have to kick all of the, the physics objects. Well, they seem to be stacked as usual as far as our resources, at least. Didn't even lose our guns or anything, either, did we? We still have the shotgun, not the rifle, the shotgun with all this ammo. So we have to fight another boss, and we're gonna be perfectly ready for that. Oh. I was hoping that wouldn't happen. I'm falling all the way down, but oh well. Uh, 
I'll time out. I gotta read this page. When Thomas Zane fell for Barbara Jagger, it happened fast. She was young, vibrant, and beautiful, full of life. He had never been a very happy man, and without any seeming effort, she had changed all that. Zane felt good for the first time in his life. Everything she did was another piece of a jigsaw puzzle he hadn't even known he'd been missing. And best of all, she made the words flow, strong and sharp. She was his muse. Well, they must have known each other for a while if uh, the Avatar of the Darkness that... Well, the Avatar of her that the Darkness is using looks the way it does. There's something else shiny down there where the wheel is in the train, but I guess not. <coughs> oh, goodness. Oh, that was simple enough. That's how you do resource conservation, you see. Oh, tch. Resource conservation, or at least you would if, um, you know, you also get, like, unlimited batteries, but... It seems we don't. Oh. Ooh, more flashbangs. We would have a good chunk of flashbangs, though, don't we? Yeah, we do. Not probably for a good reason. I wonder if we have to actually find another boss, how that is going to react to the flashbangs. It's anything like the other bosses that we've been fighting against. I get the feeling that it's going to be more vulnerable to the flares, though. Or the main, like, puzzle of the fight is just actually getting it down to the point where it's no longer cloaked in the darkness. Are you a physics object? I mean, you probably are one of those objects that can be thrown around by the evil dark telekinesis, as we've seen, but... Apparently that one in particular is not coming to life yet. I could try to climb on top of that thing, but it's probably not a very attractive prospect with that object being flung around in there. Is there anything back here in this corner? No. No reason to explore. No incentive. Well, I guess we better get on top of this thing. Sure, it'll be fine. Especially if we have to go in there. on the dark tornado, I guess. And also the... There's some kind of wacky body model in there. It's kind of thrashing around. But maybe it was just my imagination. Huh. 
The only way to reach the hillside ahead was to go through the building. I had to find a way to avoid electrocution. Can you avoid electrocution? Electrocution as well as you can avoid drowning. I mean, I guess you've been able to not deal with them. Um, Falling in the river so far. And I get the feeling there's a reason why we're apparently given a car to maybe drive around in this part. Well, I see some dudes over there. A bunch of dudes, actually. Maybe this thing will help with dealing with those guys. Or maybe it'll just uh, wreck like the first car that we tried this with. But you never know until you try, right? Well, at least we can, if nothing else, we can, like, get the shield up all of them. I hope. Give me, like, two seconds so I can recharge my battery. This thing is apparently quite good at uh, turning to nothing else. Okay, here we go. Again, bowling right here. <laughs> He's got an achievement called right away. I think there's uh, quite a few achievements related to just manslaughter with the vehicle. I feel like these guys don't even try to get out of the way after a certain point. Maybe that's under their survival instincts. Doesn't look like this thing's in the best state anymore, but it'll still run, I suppose. Oh, to do a counterintuitive move and turn the power off so we don't get electrocuted when we try to get out of here. I think that turning the power off will make it would make it less likely for uh, those things to short out, but apparently not. Oh. Now, as long as this car doesn't blow up if it takes too much damage, I think that's yeah, it's probably gonna be a better thing if we oh boy, take it back. I'm actually pretty surprised that after all the damage that it has taken, this thing is still running, but... Well, we made it through. Let's just get the fuck out of here. You're not gonna be able to follow me, surely. Nope. Isn't this the same place that we came out of a while ago? Kind of feels like it. Well, I guess it must be the same kind of building anyway. Thank you, you're very thoughtful. I suggest uh, bring some money. God damn it, come on. I'm trying to shoot you one more time so at least the big guys out of the way. I don't know if we're gonna get to the mirror peak lookout very easily, given how it's gonna take us a while just to leave the mine complex. Can I just blow these guys up with shooting those things? I don't even know. Oh, there's only one left, so I guess better not 
try to find out now. Oh, that apparently that does something, but it takes a while to pull up, so not quite so much. It seemed to me, trust no one in the dark. Probably pretty good advice, even metaphorically. This is where I came in, though, isn't it? I think it is. So where do I go from here now that I've... clear this room out? I can't immediately find anything to... Well, <laughs> any place to go to, and then I just kind of... Walk my way out of that uh, ladder animation, at least for a moment. Although, I think uh, the follow button is like a little bit farther down there on the page. Some of the taken retained echoes of their former selves, but these were just the nerve twitches of a dead thing. Nothing remained but a shell covered and filled with darkness. In most cases, these puppets were enough for the purposes of the Dark Presence. But for anything more elaborate, as with the writer, it was different. It needed his mind. And so rather than taking him over completely, it merely touched him. It touched him and left him mostly unmodified. I'm going to a few more of these things too here. Yeah. So we haven't left the coal mine complex at all, but it looks like we're about to at least. Oh. Well, gee, that was pretty close, wasn't it? Wonder what the darkness would do at this point if Alan died, though. I mean, it does seem like the darkness is trying to kill him more or less. By sending all of these spooks after him, but apparently it also wants him alive. I'm not sure what to make of those pages. Oh, there's an actual window there, so. What do we. Here we go. Flashbang grenades were standard power company equipment. You know, we just now gonna make that kind of quip. I mean, you never know. Maybe they're uh, maybe they're not supposed to be standard issue stuff, or at least that wasn't the original intention. But they found some kind of a unconventional use for them that makes them handy to carry around. Like I don't know. Like people who steal gas with rubber hoses. Or something else. Like, some people can... I'm pretty sure I saw a video once of some people lighting up that... Yeah, the gas that comes from, like, an oil well with a friggin' firework. Maybe it's the same kind of idea. So yeah, I'm thinking we have to go that way. And there goes my... I thought that maybe just maybe we we're gonna be able to get there by driving a car. So apparently we can drive... Uh, <laughs> I'm guessing that car over there works, but oh, okay. We're gonna be able to drive in this direction. I don't know if we're gonna be able to open this gate. Okay, apparently getting flashed out of the shield didn't... Uh, didn't do anything to stop that guy's charge. I'm gonna die, yeah. Two of them. Okay. 
can I get inside this thing? No, I can't. Okay, never mind. I might as well take another quick look over here just to confirm that there isn't anything there. It's apparently the point that's gonna trigger the rest of these guys to start appearing is after I cross that threshold over there. another one. I guess they all come as a group. Well, it does seem like it's gonna take them all a while to get here, though, since these are actual um, predetermined spawns and not the, uh, like, doom clone shit, like, stuff that I like to complain about with certain shooter games. Where they apparently don't like to have predetermined spawns, they just like to have shit spawning out of nowhere, so they spawning a bunch of enemies from nothing. Eh, from nothing. It just feels a lot cheaper than just having it like Doom where all the enemies exist. Ah, uh, that time that uh, stage begins. So you don't get at least a lot of surprises like that. It's not impossible, even in something like Doom. Uh, so I was pretty much had to remind myself. But it sure feels a lot less cheap, at least in my opinion. Wasn't enough to kill him. Well, I sure hope that's everybody because I'm starting to get thinned out at least on my conventional resources here. So, have all the flashbangs. But uh, I'm still being very conservative with those. Probably for no good reason, but hey. So I am trying to hoard all of the best items for as far along into the window of opportunity for using them as possible. Like in, I don't brought up exactly this before the first time I played this game. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure I brought it up at some point. But like when I played Hex, and I pretty much just hoarded all the items for the entirety of the game. And then when I got to the final boss, that's when I started to pop all of them, and he just made that fight a joke. I stared through the bars of the jail cell. Barry stood behind me, swaying on his feet, looking as ill as I felt. Agent Nightingale stood on the other side of the bars with Sheriff Breaker. Nightingale had a stack of manuscript pages in his hand. He seemed unhinged as he gloated. Well, I've got you now, Raymond Chandler. It's all here. All the evidence, including conspiracy to murder a federal agent. It's also not real, bro. Was he Jack Thompson? Raymond Chandler, more like G.K. Chesterton. More like Dashiell Habit. That he would be quite up to the level of uh, Arthur Conan Doyle, though. Okay, yes, we're going this way first. I mean, I'm guessing the place with the big light is usually going to be the place where we have to go. I mean, we can also just reference the, uh, the compass for that, but. Sometimes I guess I just like to pretend that it's not there, mostly because I forget that it's there, that it's an option that I have. We now have 15 flashbangs. I can carry at least 15 flashbangs. I guess we can carry like 20 or something like that at most. There's no one in the dark. If someone comes into the... Well, now might be a good time to use one. 
they didn't even kill all of them. They didn't even kill the most important guy that I should have killed. That sucks. Oh, we have five bullets left. Could probably use a few more bullets for this guy. I mean, we still have all the fucking shotgun bullets, but... Come on. Sometimes I like to keep it old-fashioned. Sometimes that feels like, uh... The convenient thing to do. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. I just realized we can actually fall here. Come on, Alan. I believe in you. There we go. That'll help. And even more shotgun ammo. How much of this can we carry around anyway? We now have 32 shotgun shells. And we still have to go that way, but what if we go this way instead? Probably just gonna end up in a place where we're gonna be ambushed and have to waste some resources, so... I well, probably shouldn't be going this way at all, but... just can't help myself. I mean, there's kind of a road. Maybe we do have to go this way to find so actually, Isn't this the exact same road that I... Yeah, it is. Never mind. The exact same road that I followed the first time to look. I'd like to get to the place with the light. I somehow completely forgot that that was there. That goes to speak volumes for my short-term memory. I was going to give the kidnapper all the manuscript pages I had for Alice. If that wasn't enough, I'd hold him at gunpoint and make him talk. Switch to pump action shotgun, though. Well, I guess it's gonna be at least able to hold more uh, chamber, more shells at a time. Let's not bring that out until we confirm that there's gonna be a boss fight ahead, though. I don't know what's going on. It looks like uh, both of these directions have light. Oh, I'll well, prank those guys. of the same if we went the other direction though, we went to the left instead of right. And you can say that about many things. Okay, come on, get over here, turn this on, and then quickly dodge, but apparently not dodge fast enough that we can actually, uh, avoid these guys. At <laughs> least not as much as I would have wanted to. Give me like one second, okay. Give me like one second to hopefully keep getting ever more use out of these um, out of these revolver bullets. Oh Jesus! Surely this will hold these guys out there. Huh? Let me get through here. Well, this means they can't get through the big. Beam of light. Hey, look, I'm invincible now. Surely this means that they will not keep on following me. The dark presence was moving ahead of me in the same direction I was going. A cold feeling settled itself in the pit of my stomach. <laughs> was it going for Alice? Well, how do you know? It doesn't already know exactly where she is. And where the other guy is. Why wouldn't it know that? Based on what it's seemingly able to do so far. The graveyard shift may cause cancer. Are you a boss? It might be, uh, at least something 
Resembling a boss, based on how it's moving. Okay. Can't tell where the fuck you. Okay, there you are. There you went. Catch on your cat back here. I mean, it seems like it's working. And this guy seems like he's stuck now. Uh, there we go. They unstuck him. You gotta be patient for this, actually. Like, yeah. Oh, that was exciting. How many bullets do we have left on the gun? I have uh, just enough that I can have one. Full chamber of this thing. And then one more on top of that. Maybe that could be read as something symbolic. I have enough to kill two weak enemies or one strong enemy and then myself. Maybe that's all that I need. Oh, right. This is gonna give me a, okay, this is gonna give me a checkpoint. Where is this... how far is this place that I'm trying to get to anyway? Probably gonna be a good bit. It usually is. I mean that I'm gonna have to be very excited for it though. Like at this point I'm... A ghost town. Had been for decades, maybe a century. Oh. But the spooky telekinetic darkness... telekinetic darkness was here, so... Maybe it wasn't quite as abandoned as you thought. I mean, I'm here now, too. And yeah, at this point, I'm... Given how much less of a problem I'm having with motion sickness, I feel... Uh, compelled. Or committed to at least finishing this chapter before I stop, so... Surely it can't be that far. I didn't even see this thing. Things were never as simple in my life as in fiction. I had lost count of the times I had wished there'd be a clear reason for my writer's block. Something to fight. Something to lash out on. There wasn't. I was filled with doubt. I was nothing like the hero in my books. Alex Casey had gone through his life with single-minded determination, never wavering from his goal. Even now, I was angry at myself. Angry at Alice. Angry at Barry. I was fumbling and I had no plan. <laughs> Angry at all those people in this situation, even though they're not the spooky evil monsters that are causing everything. A little unclear exactly what that means. Okay, that's a one way thing to be sure. I wouldn't be surprised I was gonna say that collapsed completely once I'm. Ah, uh, done. Crossing it. Great Peak Gorge. <laughs> Originally founded in 1928, the Great Peak Gorge mining town was one of the permanent settlements of the Bright Falls Mining Company. Or, was one of the permanent settlements the Bright Falls Mining Company built for its workers. The nearby graveyard is a testament to the dangers of the miners. No, to the dangers the miners faced on a daily basis. Most of the men who lost their lives over the years here were buried there. A grim reminder to be careful for those who remained. Creepy Gorge was abandoned almost overnight when the Bright Falls Mining Company closed its doors in 1970. So, were the people who died in the volcanic eruption also buried here? Did it say that and... No, it didn't. Okay. Just gonna say it didn't say that and I somehow failed to pay attention to that particular detail, but now it did not say if that's what happened. Is there 
living in this little shack. There's some coffee. At least we're able to keep this with us. And more batteries that we don't need right now. And nothing back here either. Dang. Is it going to be the normal telekinesis shenanigans here, or which we still can't really sidestep very effectively? Ooh, okay, just in time. Or is that tractor or whatever it is that's back there going to come to life in a very spooky Stephen King fashion? Like I said, I guess that was pretty on point. Bringing up Stephen King when talking about how uh, bizarre it is that the these objects are coming to life. He also did, uh, I guess, uh, multiple stories about evil cars too, didn't he? Christine probably being the most famous one. He also did The Mangler, which... That's the way that that sounds when you try to say it out loud is probably enough an indication for what kind of story it was. Especially the fucking movie version of it with Robert England. Oh shit, took okay, it that time. It was the first time, to be fair, that I actually got killed by those things. Okay, here we go. Where is the other one? Because I know there's another one that I've been flying off over there. Is that one? That is that one. But apparently it doesn't want to... Okay, here we go. Let's... Uh, now that we know that the rest of these things are also going to come to life, let's hang about for a, moment, for a minute. And wait for our... flashlight to recharge. Feels like we really don't need to do that too badly, but might as well make uh, you know, efficient use of our resources here. Get a head start on this, see. Yeah, see, I'm protected. Everything you throw my way will be deflected. After that exciting episode, are we any any closer to this lookout point that we were? Is this locomotive also gonna come to life? Yes, this is. Okay. Is this thing okay? Apparently, this one giant iron container thing is not going to be vulnerable to anything except a charge beam. Speaking of Metroid, okay, now it's time to use batteries, I guess, if that's literally our only option. And this thing, too. Our only option if you don't want to wait around for another two hours. She's got an achievement called Iron Horse. I'm pretty sure I got a couple of other achievements for just, I guess, defeating the spooky thrown around objects back there, but I. I wasn't really paying attention to what they were. <laughs> what? Oh, there's this... keys? 
for this place. I guess we could have just uh, skipped that fight by very quickly grabbing the keys and and getting out of sight, safe haven. But what was the fun in that? So a Lovecraft trip off. Doesn't seem very uh, compelling unless he actually did something different with it. Oh boy. Do we keep the hunting rifle or do we keep the sh I feel like I want to keep the shotgun. I feel like we're probably gonna have more ammo for that. I mean I have twenty nine, yes, so it's not like I've really been using it very often, so I do get the feeling that the hunting rifle is gonna be less uh, give me less mileage. Maybe it's actually going to be more powerful, but... Hmm. And you know what? Fuck it. Let's actually switch. I guess the, even if we get less ammo, then... Makes more sense. Since we're going to be using that less anyway. But... God damn it. Darkness? That's uh, cutting more deforestation then. And we have in a while. That's not good for the environment. was full of spelling errors and insults. It was telling me to hurry up. Yeah, well, he probably told you that in a more colorful fashion if what you said is true. I don't know why you're filtering yourself. Well, I wish I could hurry up, but I can only move so fast, you know. I can only go through this trail so fast if it just kind of keeps going on. Birds. Oh no, birds. Well, if they're like, I guess we have to have a boss fight with the birds again. Maybe I'll try to get across this bridge. And then turn our attention back there. Okay, these guys are really coming over here. And even though I shine my light at him, that didn't seem to stop him. Oh shit. They're gonna just dive on me from directly above. I can't do much about that. For uh, demonstrating again. That takes care of one group of birds. I would like to, uh, I guess, put more distance between myself and the other one. The other one so that I can recharge my flashlight more. Or just get out of range of them. That works too. The silver mine. Of course, a coal mine and also a silver mine now. It 
typical for silver mines to be found in this part of the world? I have no idea. I only know one place in the entire world that's known for silver mines, and it's nowhere near here, I'll tell you that much. Tunnel... something? Tunnels go to Cauldron Lake. Which tunnels? These tunnels? I mean... Well, I guess what I mean is obviously these tunnels, but... If we want to go to Cauldron Lake, do we want to go in that direction? Or to the opening that was right over there? I guess I'm going to go back to the opening. In a minute... Uh, what's your name again? Alice. Alice, are you just some weird uh, Rule 63 version of myself that I made up in my head? That's a very bizarre and uh, surreal, self-serving thing. That would be a... Uh, would probably be a uh, pretty... Pretty... That's what I'm looking for. Disturbing, distressing. Okay, maybe I have to go this way. Which, of course, tells me that I have to check out what's in the other direction first. Apparently, I was a little mistaken. Or maybe I wasn't, and that was all somehow part of a, an optional sequence. You see, the compass is telling me to go this way, so I don't know. Do I find if I go this way? Is it gonna be a one-way thing? Because if it is gonna be a one-way thing. Which it is. No, I'm not going that way yet. I guess I do have to go the other way. But I have flares now, so it's all good. Okay, hold on. Pretty sure that I'm seeing the yeah, the, the letters are literally floating a little bit off of the uh, the rock texture from a bit from this angle. Maybe that's part of the spooky magic, though. Maybe the letters were actually uh, part of some fluorescent paint left behind by the bizarre. Supernatural benevolent figure of that writer guy, who I guess must be the the talking orb of light that we've seen a couple of times. Okay. I'm losing it. I gotta get out of here. Is this gonna be like a a version of the ending of Silent Hill 2, where these sexes are reversed? stories about the hide behind. That could have been an interesting time, okay, so this is just water. Guess we can't go that way. Water or tower or dark water like in that cartoon, or maybe dark water like in that Fatal Frame game that nobody had ever played until it came out on PC some time back. PC and probably a few other platforms. I don't remember if it only came out on PC, yes. Hmm, a little. That's a thing when it stopped being a Wii U exclusive, but... Let's actually go this way now, I think I fucked around here enough. I'm guessing we want to go that way where the big shining light is, but what do we have in the meantime? More ammo, hunting rifle ammo. Okay, I guess we're probably not going that way for 
Uh, should we be running away from that thing? No. Uh, no goodness. Like the collapse is not gonna catch up to us or anything. Uh, is that one of the strong thug enemies again? I think it must be, or if it's just a... Oh, okay. This guy just spawned from nothingness behind me. That's not good. Oh, just a moment. Hey, fellas, look what I have. Do you like it? And I'm dead. Okay, let's have it again now that I know that apparently I'm gonna get ganged up on from every direction possible after I run all the way back up there, I guess. That seems like a very interesting way for things to play out. It also seems pretty on the nose how apparently a lot of these horror stories that are set like very far north have a, some kind of underground mine as a setting. Guess people just really don't like mines. As far as places that make them. Nervous, I don't know. Oh, there's a page right here. Hold on. Let me see if I can at least grab this before I... I carry on. Even behind the closed doors and curtains of his grimy room at the Majestic, the local motel, Nightingale could feel the locals' eyes on him, the unrelenting pressure of their judgment. He forced it out of his mind. For all he knew, they could all be under Wake's spell already. You do what you have to do to get the job done. He took comfort from the bottle in his hand. Please, he thought. Just let me get through this. It could all be under Wake's spell already, so maybe he sees Wake as like a Sutter Kane kind of figure. Or maybe there is uh, more of a spooky in the mouth of madness thing going on here. If we try to go this way, it's just like the walk over. If we stand right here, we won't be able to. If they won't be able to ambush me from behind, surely, because there's no fucking way that they can spawn behind me when I'm standing here. Not without breaking every law of physics. Oh, I'm... Okay, I was trying to spam dodge, but I guess that didn't work. Okay, here we go. I thought... I'm trying to, you know, drop a thing. And I didn't, didn't hit these guys at all. Maybe I can pop another one, like, right in front of me here. There we go. As for this... This big gang up in this narrow, confined space, it's probably... worth it to use a couple. Something there, and apparently nothing whatsoever in the other direction. It's not even way up this mine shaft in order to go on. Maybe the machinery could help me with that. Even multiple Resident Evil games have this kind of thing as their setting. Like arguably even behind or even uh, before RE4. I guess we don't have to. How about this? Will this work? Oh yeah, this will work, actually. Like, even before Resident Evil 4, which is probably the most famous example of uh, those kinds of environments in... In RE, I get the feeling that there was something like that. Or if it's not coming to mind immediately, but like... But sure that even RE 5 and 6 had that kind of thing going on, too. Let's try this. There's a ladder right there, isn't there? Where 
Francisco. Oh, I think I see what's going on. We have to uh, get things out of it. We can use it as a breeder at this level, but not before. <laughs> This thing that the crane is lifting up seems uh, phenomenally stable for being a bunch of stuff bundled together. <laughs> and yeah, I feel like the movement physics for the character in this are not really too great for platforming, but seems to be kind of working out. Now we can make it all the way across. I hope we're getting checkpointed or anything, or something. Better. Where to lose to a very dumb fall right now, that would not be a great state of affairs. Okay, here we go. Good point, checkpoint. Through uh, quite a lot in this nighttime trick. Is that the mirror pick look at? I mean, looks like it, there's a cable car going to it, so I would like to imagine that uh, there's good reason to believe that that's case for I hear birds. Guess that's why you said them. Um, Apparently we can fly through these wooden structures too. It's all the way up here though, there should be a reason for us to come up here, other than just grabbing more flares, although I guess we'll do that too. I'll not say no to more resources. It's on the, on the summit here, the mountain top. It's another page. And we can focus on what? Just the mountain? Is that, like, is that the place we're trying to go? Where, where the light is across the way? It's not very clear, but I mean, hopefully we're not going all the way up to where the fucking snow is. Lightning flash behind the windows of Cauldron Lake Lodge. Tor Anderson laughed and held the steel hammer above his head. Nurse Sinclair was trying to calm him down without success. Tor grinned madly and shouted, My hammer's up. Here's a friendly poke from Molnir, wench. He brought the hammer down with all his might on Sinclair's head. We're on a comeback tour, baby. I don't think we've seen anything like that happen yet, though. I wonder if that's going to be a thing that we're going to witness in the future. Just get there. To the next big flash of light. Nothing will go wrong this time. There's no reason to believe anything like that will happen. It's only an even, uh, an even wider chasm than the last one. Oh, there we go. Being uh, more predictable this time, though. Those proverbial birds have been shoot down very in a very simple fashion. 
I didn't even have to use my charge up flashlight for those guys. Okay, we got more of them. I don't know if any of them are gonna charge me again, but I well, didn't seem that way. Like we're almost there too. Go up. I seem to remember that I can do that. Oh, did it actually understood it? I guess it did something. I can't see what it looks like below me now, but... Well, at least we made it most of the way across. Surely it won't be that hard to... Oh, shit. Surely it won't be that hard is what I would like to say to... Uh, get up to the top there. Wait, what? Somebody else helping me again, is it that guy? Yeah. The evil kidnap that we're chasing. Oh no, never mind, that was me. Just had the wrong gun equipped. Shit. I might as well get some use out of it. Out of it there. I probably should have used it, but I completely forgot I had the flare gun, to be honest with you. I thought I just had the regular flares and the, uh... And the uh, flashbangs. I don't know if there's any point to doing that, but in this game I wouldn't be surprised. Are we there yet? We crossed the chasm. Some kind of smoke going on here. Surely that means that something happened here recently. Something like this, um... This stove being powered by somebody, I don't know. And I think this fog means that we're gonna get more shit summoned to fight us real soon here. That's what I figured. Oh. I didn't even realize this guy was next to me. Not so much as the nature of being attacked suddenly with no warning. Are they in two shots now instead of three? No. A couple of those guys died in two shots instead of three then. That probably will be a bit of good news. So we got enough flares that we don't need to worry about them ever again now. So only the limit is 20 flares. Cauldron Lake. The eighth deepest lake in the world. Cauldron Lake is a caldera lake formed in a volcanic crater. Much like the ones in Nicaragua. The volcano itself could be considered to be active, but it has not erupted since the volcanic earthquakes of 1970. Even then, the underground activity was comparably mild. Despite some property damage, there were no casualties, except the miners that died according to that other black. Cauldron Lake is one of the most beautiful spots in Bright Falls area, as well as a central figure in many local folk tales. It's a popular recreational area for the area residents. And how clearly can we see it from here anyway? I don't know. Is it directly below us? Doesn't look like a lake to me, it looks like a giant chasm. Can I even get up here like I'm trying to, or am I barred from doing so? Oh, here we go. Not that there's really any reason for me to do so, but... You know I need to check. I just take it easy, I guess. Nothing will go wrong. We're not gonna have a reenactment of the final scene in Indiana Jones 2. No, sorry.
Let's just use a flare. Hold on. That'd be a good idea. Hmm, at this point. Damn it. I can't believe they can aim ahead of my trajectory. That's. Feels like it's too clever for this AI. Thing and another flare. All right. Or just another thing, flare and ammo. How much flare and ammo do we have? We have eight. So yeah, if we have to fight any kind of any kind of especially strong enemy, I don't think it's gonna be an issue at all. Of course, uh, Joy's still out to see if anything like that will happen. Or as far as whether anything like that will happen. Okay, we don't have a lot of missing pages left, so I have to assume that uh, we're almost at the end. Let's hear this one. Mod had checked all of Stucky's rental cabins. There had been no sign of the wakes. It was dark when he'd found their car parked at the end of the road by Cauldron Lake. It made no sense. They must have taken a wrong turn. But there was no sign of them, and the car had been there for hours already. Frustrated, Mott stood on the rotten ruin of the footbridge that had once led to Diver's Isle before it sank beneath the waves years ago. The boss wouldn't be happy. Oh, you will. So he found the car, but he didn't found the island. So it's just like everybody else who uh, apparently thinks that the island, or I guess to them, from their perspective, and maybe we're the only ones, like Alan and his wife were the only ones to whom it didn't look that way, the island was still there. I mean, all of these different collations of information do seem to suggest that that's the... Uh, like truth, or at least the more uh, backed truth, that the island is just not there, and yet they found it when they came here. Maybe that was the start of it. What's this place? Not something you probably would have expected to find, uh, just perched on a random mountain top that doesn't seem to be connected to anything here. Yeah, you get the feeling that we're gonna have to come in here. Question is... Oh, okay, never mind, I was gonna say we... Oh, I guess we don't have any choice now, so we're just press on. Tom, 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 Tom. There is no I, Tom. CN and TSO Thomas C one. CN? Who is CN though? I think those are the same uh you talk to me on TV. Oh boy, Tom Tom, I guess you Tom. Can you write this? I curse you, Thomas Sane. I guess this one is the one that's out of out of luck with the other ones, but who is CN? Or CH or or CW. It's not very clear what letter is the second one there, but I don't think that matches up with the initials of his actual girlfriend that he had. But we kind of have to wonder who left that behind. I don't think we know anyone named CW or with the initial CW so far. Do we? Thinking about it, and I don't think that's the case. Flare seems like a, I have a bunch of them at this point. Can't 
hopefully I'm shooting, but... Hopefully I'm shooting at someone who will die when I shoot. Oh, jeez. Is this just another one? Arm and die. Okay, <laughs> never mind. Okay, is this where the floor is about to collapse now? No, not quite. Oh, here's some ammo for the gun. We're apparently full on hunting rifle ammo, so maybe I should use that for this next encounter. I should just use flashbangs, probably. Or maybe a combination of these two things. Might be uh, the best idea, actually. To the uh, superior gambit. I'm gonna pop this, and then I'm gonna pop this, and see how you guys like it. Oh, that probably killed one guy, huh? That kind of stinks a lot. I'm gonna get all you guys to congregate right here, then. There we go. And now we can just... Is there anybody on left? Okay. I'll oh, just have to pop a couple. Or not. Apparently they're not done harassing me yet. Looks like... Ones that are like directly above me shooting down at me. That might explain why I somehow got hit when I didn't see anyone coming up either. Well, I didn't see it, so I guess the guy on the stairs that was above the other guy must have somehow done that. Even though I never saw that animation occur. Sure, it'll be perfectly safe now. Looking like freaking honor Londo or new Londo. So, you know, heading up the ruined building so I can talk to the silver guy. Yep, it's a one way going down thing now. How much farther until we get to the Mirror Peak lookout? Because it seems like we've been on this trail for. Cauldron Lake. I thought I could make out the spot where the island and the cabin had been. There was a light near it. It had to be a boat. Is that the Mirror Peak lookout? Is it down on the lake? It seems a bit counterintuitive, but. Close now. I had to get there fast. I dreaded what I would find. Well, I found this to begin. I tried to hold on to Alice, but her form melted away. I was losing control. Dr. Hartman stood in place. I wanted to hit him, but my arms were jelly. He smiled. It was a reassuring smile, and I hated him for it. I had to give you a sedative. Don't fight it. You went through another rough period. Right now, it's very important that you stay calm. We don't want you to have another episode. You're a patient at my clinic. Have been for a while now. Oh, jeez. Surely this is going to be another you know, one of those... Dr. Caligari endings. That would be like the biggest cop out at this point. Somehow I get the feeling that it won't be. Wait! Are you? Wait! Hey, I'm here! I'm coming! Uh, no! Get away! Sorry! Please, lady! The boss didn't know who he was messing with! I didn't know! I swear I didn't know! We don't have his wife! We don't know where she is! She's probably we just said we had her to make a play ball, you see, you see? Forget a writing for us, please! Please, oh. I'm sorry, please, don't hurt me! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Alright. I mean, we could interpret that as good news. That would mean that he doesn't have the wife. But we're gonna want to get some clarification nevertheless.
Get some kind of a scene, I guess a flash forward. Information about him falling into the lake came out of the pages, but I don't remember exactly what else he'd said. <laughs> I'm guessing he didn't stay down there for too long. Oh boy, we <laughs> can't the last of music. I guess I might have seen this coming though. I'm guessing he's not gonna be staying down there for too long as far as um, Stuff happening. I don't know if somebody else showed up there. Let's see what. I'm hunted by the law. How the next thing starts. Are you seriously telling me that writer just took out my deputies? A thriller I supposedly wrote is coming true. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. I was told that Alice had been kidnapped, but that was a lie. We don't have his wife. We don't know where she is! Her purported kidnapper was eaten up by the Dark Presence before it attacked me. Throw me down into the lake, or apparently I was pulled out by someone in the turbinates. Shh, baby. It was just a nightmare. Alice. There you are. Hartman, I fell. I had to give you a sedative. Don't fight it. You went through another rough period. What? Right now, it's very important that you stay calm. We don't want you to have another episode. You're a patient at my clinic. Have been for a while now. The shock of your wife's death triggered a mental illness. No, you're... you lie. You're suffering from various symptoms of undifferentiated schizophrenia. Bastard. It's okay, okay Alan. Just, Just let go. go. But we're not at some kind of hospital scene, we're in the cabin again instead, but... I guess we did meet that psychiatrist guy before in the police station, I think. Whatever Hartman had bumped in me was making me numb. I felt like this was happening to someone else. Someone I was watching on television. I couldn't think. Couldn't focus. <laughs> Are we alive? Any empty sheets of paper here. No manuscript pages. Are we in... The door was locked. I was a prisoner here. Oh, okay, maybe we're not in the place then. In the cabin. We actually are in some kind of hospital, maybe. Feeling better now? Feeling calm. Doesn't seem very safe if it's a psychiatric hospital. Gorilla with you. So sure, I'm calm. I get the message. Loud and clear. Quite right. That's the spirit? You're being very brave, Alan. I understand you're confused. I would be more concerned if you weren't suspicious of me. I don't blame you for it. Big of you. Now, why don't you come with me? We'll reacquaint you with my clinic and go over everything you might have forgotten. Little walk and some fresh air? Yes, it will do you good. Well, I will do that now that I guess I've determined that I'm not in the place that I thought I was. Seems to be looking out over the same lake regardless, though. Looks weird, but we will do that, but only later, because I just wanted to get to the end of the previous episode. So we will return to episode 4, I think it was, yeah. Apparently has just begun at a later date. Probably tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow. If I don't completely uh, find myself in a state where it's completely impossible for me to function at the usual hour. But hopefully that doesn't happen. But right now I think it's high time that everyone had a cold things here. I'm probably going for like almost an hour later than I kind of anticipated that I would, so let's go ahead and see what um, I can play to play this out. I'm sure, this will do just about as much as anything. What happened? Well, I, I'm stopping for now, but if you mean like 
made anything happen that I'm not gonna be able to do it. Not really, other than just me managing my sleep badly as always. I mean, these past two weeks, yeah, that's, uh, I think that's partially to do with that, and partially to do with uh, an event that was... I got a happen at the end of last week, and it did, so I'm just kind of uh, forgetting about all the stuff to focus on that. But now it has happened, so probably won't be doing anything like that. That's not just, uh, like, if I end up disappearing mysteriously, I probably will end up... Uh, having bad sleep cycle management as an excuse instead of anything else. Have you been too busy? Well, in a manner of speaking. <laughs> Not with any of the stuff that you would probably expect me to be busy with, but with some stuff regardless. But yeah, I don't think that kind of thing will probably end up happening again, at least without me being able to... Uh, I don't know. And be aware of it myself. But yeah. As far as right now, I will try to at least ration my time in a way that I'm uh, gonna be able to do stuff during the day. That would probably be good enough for me. But yeah, like I said, right now we're just gonna be calling things and I will try to stream tomorrow more than weekend if I don't end up finishing the game then, which seems pretty likely now that I see how far I'm into it at this point versus how long it apparently is, because apparently it's six chapters. I might try to do something over the weekend, maybe not, maybe yes if I have a chance, but Maybe try also try doing something, doing something over the weekend specifically to finish the game, if I don't end up doing it for then. But yeah, like I'm pretty sure I may have mentioned before, I'll try to just do that this week. And then move on to a few other things next week, so that's what's on the plate for now. So, that having been said, I guess tonight I will just say you'll take it easy, I think. Everybody forgot me like always. Thanks for chatting, always quit whenever people chat, and I will see you later.